Well, a very good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck Sim live stream. Today, it is the 5th of March, 2024. Three minutes past four in the afternoon here in the United Kingdom. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator in the PMDG 737. We've not flown it for a week or two. I wanted to fly a 737 because today is my last day at work. Yay, I've actually got some days off. Um, as of an hour and a half ago, I was in a simulator doing some auditing. Um, for the airline just to make sure the sim was working okay I got rostered for that which is really good fun uh, but it did mean that it was great for timing so as soon as the session was finished I'd go straight home I didn't have to debrief anything as well so I got home um, got to, well no I didn't get changed I'm in my clothes actually <laughs> I was at work and got this stream uh, up and running uh, to fly into Barcelona we've been into this airport several times but MK Studios who have not worked with in the past got in touch uh, recently and said would you like a copy of, your, uh, of our brand new Barcelona scenery released this week I said yes please uh, not only would I want to give away a copy, they got in contact and said, would you like to give away another copy on behalf of MK Studios? So I've got two copies of this scenery to give away, one on behalf of MK Studios and one from myself. Not that we're in Barcelona right now, we need to get there first. We're currently in the capital of France, Paris, Paris Orly. This is Jetstream Designs Orly scenery, also very nice. Uh, live time, live weather, it's an absolutely groggy day here. Showers of rain, there's sea bees around as well, um, a westerly wind as well. But the weather waiting for us in Barcelona is very typical Barcelona. Lovely weather, 18 degrees, few clouds. We should see the weather improve as we fly southbound today. Uh, anyway, who have we got here in chat? Don't know Mosina says, mega, 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 mega. Hope you're doing well. Um, Tamanga says, why is it so gloomy? Well, it's Paris. No, I'm joking. It's the weather in Paris right now. That's why. Uh, Rory Heap, good afternoon, everybody. He says, I hope you're doing well, Rory. Nice to see you here. Uh, Jessica Hutt says, well... Four days from the 24 months badge uh, time. Surefly has been a sub since COVID hit. Thank you very much for your continued support, uh, Jessica, and for your uh, captain uh, rank now. Yes, you will get the ultimate alpaca badge very soon. Thank you very much. Base, uh, Beeline Pilots enjoying the intro music. That was written by the members of the channel. Very grateful for all the work they do as well. Uh, Domino Mona Cena says, with Facebook down all over the world, we should have plenty of viewers today. Is Facebook down? Is that... Is that a thing? I've not been on it all day. I didn't even realise Facebook down. The world's going to melt, isn't it? I I'm so curious. I'm actually opening up BBC News app. Uh, no, it doesn't say anything about Facebook. It can't be that important. It tells me that councils need to cut diversity plans in budget. Okay, interesting. Um, oh, okay. Well, there you go. There's a fun fact for the day. Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger. Well, they're all owned by the same company, aren't they? Brilliant. Uh, but yes, latest version of the PMDG 737. Uh, I've been into Barcelona about 40 times in real life. I was actually looking at my logbook prior to the start of this stream. So the idea is I'll give you a full proper approach briefing. So if you were to get the MK Studios Barcelona scenery and fly into this airport, you know exactly uh, what we do if you're flying in from the north, uh, so from the UK, which is where I'm based, uh, about the procedures, what transitions you can expect, the runway in use as well. But yeah, here we are, Alpaca Airways, thanks to Bounce has made this livery. Um, we're going to fly with our virtual airline today as well via New Sky. We have over 300 virtual pilots. Massive thanks to Domino, Mosina and Jordan for all their hard work running the virtual airline. If you'd like to join, uh, head over to the video description where you'll find a link to New Sky. You're completely free to join the virtual airline and you can come and fly for Alpaca Airways. Brilliant. Uh, yes, thanks for getting the link there, Donald Mosina as well. I hope you're doing well. Stu Yates, he says, Afternoon Skip, I hope you're well doing very well. Thank you. Nice to be back streaming again. Yeah, looking forward to these uh, days off. Uh, it's been a busy week. Uh, four days off and then back to work uh, at the weekend as well. So I'll get another stream in. I'd like to fly the MD-11 again uh, in x but I've been sort of waiting until x sort of updates to point one. I don't know how close that is. Maybe we can fly the MD-11 before that, we'll see. Um, I did see a familiar face, I did. Richard Asberg, hope you're doing well. Looking forward to seeing the new scenery for Barcelona. It looks very nice. When we land, we'll do a full preview of the scenery, look inside the terminals, what features are included. Uh, we're going to use GSX 172 passengers we've got to take to Barcelona today. And then, of course, we'll be running two copies of the giveaway. And if you're not so fortunate to win a giveaway, uh, the, the uh, scenery is available in pretty much every store. I think any builds or Bex are offering it as well, but it's a 20% discount at a number of places for the first week. So you can pick it up for just £12 at the moment, which is very nice. Um, excellent. So we'll use this opportunity now to jump into the cockpit. As I said, we are completely cold and dark. I was only in the fixed space sim about an hour and a half ago. Back, back in we go again to, to stream once more. <laughs> but uh, always love spending my yeah. time with you guys. Thank you very much, Tom Hates uh, Cat, for your one pound one donation. Very kind. Uh, it said, My finals are finished last just last weekend. We'll be visiting Wells soon. Whereabouts is Wells? Wells next to the sea? You on about there, Tom Hates Cats? I don't know. Well, thank you very much for your donation. Hope you are doing very well indeed. So, firstly, 
this is Jetstream Designs scenery, uh, and I think the same with uh, the MK Studios Barcelona. You get this full, v is it VGS, v VGDS system? So you can see here, look, we're at Gate Charlie 2. We've got the flight information to Barcelona, leaving in 21 minutes, due out at 1630 Zulu. Uh, the runway and SID we can expect too. I don't know what that information is, CNF, but uh, yeah, really, really cool to see all that integration with these uh, sims. It adds to the immersion indeed. Uh, right, so let's just get some electrical power. So battery on. GPU on the bus, electric hydraulic pumps we can pop on, landing gear lever is down, we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six green lights, check the aircraft documentation, it's all up to date. I went flying as well for the first time in two days, I went to Poland which was great fun, I haven't got any more flights now for another three to four weeks, just sim, but uh, it was nice to go flying. For those who might have noticed, I'm uh, talking a lot better today, I still have the remnants of this cold, a little bit nasally, but it was a lot worse when I was streaming three or four days ago. But, uh, better now. Um, right, let's fire up uh, New Sky then and get this uh, flight all started. Now why isn't the New Sky overlay working? Let me just select it again. Uh, new Sky done. There we are. So you can see here, uh, this was sent from uh, Jordan Dominic. Don't, it, don't put me up here. I don't do anything. You, you put me last. Uh, you two run all, do all the hardware on this virtual airline. I just watch. But uh, we've got loads of fun awards that you can take part in. Uh, I've completed two of them. Um, but if I go here to Alpaca Airways, uh, look at all these tours you can now take part in to complete. There's around the world tours. Oh wow, look at the new panda. 322 pilots have joined Alpaca Airways. So I think we're the second or third busiest or the most popular one on New Sky now, but uh, go check it out. Right, anyway, let's log our flight. So we're going to go here to My Flights, Book a Flight. Uh, I don't think there's any chartered flights to Barcelona. No, so chartered flights, you can ch choose the reason you earn more money uh, free them. So we'll go free flight passenger, Alpaca Airways. We are today Alpaca 32 Mike Kilo. Uh, oops already presets that, so put 32 Mike Kilo. Departing from Orly, which is... Oh, I always forget the code for this airport. Is it Lima? Foxtrot? Papa Oscar? Yes, I always get this to lose my... Hold up. Barcelona's level. Uh, we're in the 738, Boeing 738. Uh, we're departing at 1630. We'll take as many passengers as we can. Uh, 1630. Duration it should be an hour and fifteen, so we're block time. We'll just increase this slightly. I've got an hour forty. Uh, book flight. There we are. So flight has been added, and we can commence the flight. Start flights. There we are. So it's now recording all the information for our sector. Perfect. So that's all booked on uh, level. Yes, <laughs> I always call it that. List of it. Level is Barcelona. Uh, maybe we could have that as the giveaway answer. Uh, so let's do the rest of the safety inspection. So uh, check the scripts down here. Ooh, it's looking very, very dark in here. In the, in the PMDG, that's a very dark grey. I've just been in the sim today, but it is dark outside. Right, three squibs we have. We now have fault, AP detector in op, master caution, overheat detector. We can reset that. Check the fire test. Fire warning light, master caution, overheat test, the bell, engine overheat lights, wheel well lights, and all three fire lights illuminated. Um, test the attend button. Fuel for this sector then. Let me just grab the operational flight plan. So that is here. Now there is a little bit of en route weather and CBs around. The weather at destination is absolutely fine. I'm just going to put on 15 minutes extra fuel for weather avoidance on departure. So um, 5, 6 is minimum. So what we'll do, we'll put on 6.2 tonnes of fuel. Uh, so for that, I can either use GSX or if I go here to FMC, uh, posinit root. Actually, you know what, let's just not do this. Oh, we'll come back to the fuel in a second. That's when I usually do that. So that's all done. Flaps are up, which match the indicated position. Do a takeoff config warning. That's good. Uh, cargo fire test. Forward aft discharge. Two green lights. Fire warning lights illuminated. 2000 standby. Gear extension door is closed. Circuit breakers are all in. Upper overhead panel then. We'll check the Mac Air speed warning test. Flight recorder. Stall warning test is done. IRS to nav. EC's on. No engine control lights and reverser lights aren't illuminated. Passenger oxygen normal. 
Dragons over 15 hundred PSI. Circuit breakers are in. Check the tech log. The aircraft is fully serviceable. And uh, let's just go here to the FMC. Ident, latest air axe installed. Uh, Lima, Foxtrot. I've already just forgotten what it was. Um, Papa Oscar? I don't want to get this wrong. You didn't even put it in chat. Yeah, Lima, Foxtrot, Papa Oscar. There we are. GPS left. Route. Uh, level. But I think I can press flight plan request. There we are. Sim brief. And we're just going to up that fuel to 6.2. 6.2. Ah! What happened there? No. How do I add more fuel? If I want to use this fuel. I'm going to do it manually. So I'm just going to put set payload. Set fuel. And then increase it manually and I, I know there's a way of doing it with GSX but now we've got this Phoenix update with full GSX integration it's so much better I hate having to go heads down in here it's the only way to add fuel it's just a bit fiddly 6-2 there we are uh, so that's that done and now I can fire up GSX to start boarding anyway so uh, request boarding I don't think GSX is working for the air bridge. I tried to get it to operate earlier and it didn't work. No. Well, it's loading the bags at least. Yeah, we'll have to keep out on the air bridge and see what happens. Uh, Piers in Paris, always in all it. Ah, I see the logic behind it now. Thank you. <laughs> right, we'll have to keep an eye out and see what happens when the passenger's board. So that's done. FMC then. Uh, flight plan request. Uh, yeah, we've done that already. There we are, let's just get the routing in the FMC. Hope you're doing well. Life begins at uh, 40 truck. Thanks for popping in. Hello, Morgus1 as well. Uh, Emily says, nice to watch you after college as, uh, and after I've been... Uh, after I've had a good day there. Ah, very good. I'm glad you've had a good day. Uh, oh, it's all in. Route uplink ready. Yes, please. Load. That sounds like the passengers are boarding. Where are they going to come in from, I wonder? I think there's no animation of the passengers today. That's a shame. Uh, root data uplink. Okay, I think that's done. Activate. Uh, departures. Now, I think it's wrong. Sim brief went for runway 25. Is it runway 24 that's preferred for departure for noise abatement? I'm just going to go for runway 25. I'm going to upset some Parisians, but uh, not a problem today. Uh, 25 because it's closer. Iriksu 1 X ray. And make a note of this for later because I've been to Barcelona quite a few times. You can expect westerly, ILS Zulu 24 right. Uh, from the north, it's an Alba 2 Whiskey arrival. And this is important, make sure you select the Calia 2 Whiskey transition, or one of the transitions. It's a point R nav merging arrival. So you always get cleared, or I've always been cleared on either the Alba 2 Whiskey or the Pummel 2 Whiskey, depending on where the routing is from the north. We always get the Calia 2 Whiskey transition going into Barcelona from the north. Well, we do. Anyway, uh, that's executed. Zero fuel weight is in 61 tons, which is what we're expecting. Our alternate is Reyes, I believe. So back to electronic flight bag. Black bag. Um, flight plan, uh, 1.9 tons for Reyes, right next to Barcelona, so we don't need a huge amount of alternate fuel. Cost index, 30. We're at a lower 33,000 feet today. Apparently that's the most optimal flight level. Our top of climb wind, we can insert now. 285 at 16 knots. And we have unable 280 knots at Alba. That's because the PMDG doesn't put 280 knots or below because it doesn't know how to do it. So 280 or below. It always puts hard speeds. There we are. It should say 280 or below. We just have to do it manually. Ah! Have PMDG now updated the transition altitude to now replicate the actual aer aerodrome? That's quite good because it used to always say 18,000. So that's good that they've got that. Cool. Um, that's all loaded. The performance in reality is done independently by two pilots, but we'll do it on our own here. So it's Paris Orly runway 25, non-standard. I know it is runway 24 usually for noise abatement, but we're going to use 25 today because I was going to taxi to the other side of the airport. Uh, surface wind import from 
aircraft, the weight, import the weather. So it's 290 at 10 knots, 9 degrees, 1015. The runway is currently wet, so break, uh, runway condition wet. There we are, so I'll press calculate and see what that comes out with. Um, so we've got uh, TO, so that's 426K, but with a high assumed temperature of 51 degrees. So uh, 26K. Assume temperature 51 degrees. That gives us an N1 of 90.9. The FMC here says 91.8. That is good. So by the time I turn on the AP bleed, that will reduce to 91.0, which is just within 0 0.1, so that's fine. So we'll get the AP started now, anyway. I've been out of sequence here. I'm doing the entire FMC loading right now. Uh, take off flap 5. CG is in. Speeds are wet speed. So you see it says 134 and 141. The difference is here. So select wet. 34, 43, 48. 34, 43, 48. They're all within a knot. And we can accept. Set V2. 148 knots. And the trim we can set. The trim is not there. We take it from the FMC. So 5.6 units. 5.6 units set. Uh, JP Devlin, last night the Zebo gave me a magenta line on the speed tape drag required on the uh, CDU. What's the CDU? Is that, is that an MCP? Uh, or FMC, you mean. Uh, needing speed brakes. Is this normal with VNAV or was my descent too steep? I haven't seen it with PMDG. Yeah, I mean... You can get uh, drag required as soon as your target speed starts getting above 10 knots uh, and you're on path, so that's quite common um, depending on the external conditions. But uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know, the PMDG VNAV seems to be perfect all the time. The reality is, VNAV in the real aircraft isn't perfect all the time. I think PMDG have some sort of workaround for VNAV in that VNAV is always showing you on path perfectly on every single descent but the rates of descent vary considerably despite the fact the target speed is always the same in descent based off your cost index so it seems to be too shallow a descent but it seems to show idle path on VNAV whereas the, the Zebo I know for a fact is a proper generated idle path descent based off your, your cost index and target descent speed where it holds the speed if the conditions are right, but the speed will vary if the conditions change outside, and you as a pilot have to adjust that. Um, I, I don't know, that's just from observing, and I know what the aircraft does, I know what the PMDG does, and I know what the Zebo does, and sometimes I look at the PMDG and it's a very shallow descent, we're sending at 270 knots, it's holding the speed perfectly, even though we're doing 1800 feet per minute. Usually at that sort of speed, it's around two and a half thousand feet. So, so yeah, we, there are things that the PMDG does. Don't get me wrong; it's a fantastic add-on, but it's just like really. But then again, the Zebo has its moments where I'm like, no, that's not right. So yes, yeah, so I have to keep an eye on it. Now, my job when I'm streaming is to always point out any differences from the real aeroplane, uh, so so I can sort of uh, yeah, maybe the, the devs could feed that back into improving it. Right. So speeds are all set onto the overhead paddle. Your dampers on, nav transfer, display switches are normal or auto. We always check the crossfeed valve, bright, dim, bright, and off. We can turn on all the fuel pumps. Now, I, I, is GSX boarding right now? I think there's just a weird little thing. Yeah, look, boarding passengers now, but there's... I don't know if... I have a GSX profile installed for this airport, and I, I just probably doesn't recognise this stand, but it is simulating the boarding of the passengers. I've got the volume turned right down for GSX but even even if I turn it up I can't hear anything uh, anyway we'll carry on with the panel scan APUs available on the bus fueling's complete window heat is on voice record is on PAX auto uh, 33,000 feet sea level at Barcelona that's all good flight directors we can pop on runway heading and QDM is set for our departures I do have Navigraph open but I've also got it selected here uh, the SID, we can, <coughs> excuse me, uh, initial climb clearance is flight level 80, so we can set that on the MCP, there we are, boarding complete. Uh, there's no ATC online, uh, so that's 80, we imagine we've been cleared, let me just get rid of this. Uh, flight directors are on masters, border brake to RTO, reset fuel flow, this should be on QNH. Trim sets, right around trim set as well. 
perfect. All looking good. We'll just brief the taxi and the SID, and then we'll get on our way. Um, Tamango says, good, wet conditions equal engine is louder. Uh, not usually, there uh, shouldn't be any change there. Uh, JP, I've noticed Zebo VNAV can hunt for a target speed, needing manual control. I've been wondering if that's a bug or normal. Normal, Interesting though, yeah, so again, I flew yesterday, I went to Poland, and on descent into undisclosed Polish destination, um, the VNAV speed, it would hop, wasn't, wasn't doing a good job holding the target speed. This, I'm talking about the real aircraft here. So the speeds kept uh, coming off, so we actually went to uh, open the speed window, which with common VNAV uh, stays on path. The order throttle then adds thrust to fly with the speed. On the way back to the UK, VNAV was holding speed really nicely, so it would descend on path, idle thrust, speed was nice. So it does vary a little bit from airport to airport. Um, uh, Sylvia, you need to exclude custom jetways. I've done it. I've excluded custom jetways in the uh, GSX settings, so these are just the default jetways. I've done that in the GSX thing, as I do with all the airports and with the GSX profile. Unless there's something else I'm completely unaware of with GSX. Uh, right, that's all set. Yes, let's brief our taxi and let's see it. So let me pop up Navigraph. Here's our routing, firstly. Uh, lovely route, southbound flying, just east of Toulouse, uh, east of the Pyrenees, descending into Barcelona. Uh, we're going right over the top of uh, Bzeers here, flown into that airport a long time ago. Perpignan as well. Um, Rear on stand, Charlie. What was it? I can't remember what stand I was on. Charlie 2. There we are. So, Charlie 2. Here we are. For pushback, we'll face east. We'll go Lima 1, Whiskey. I know it's non standard, but I will taxi to runway 25 today via Whiskey 5, and we'll go full length. And then the SID. Oh, no, that's the start. Uh, the SID will be the Iriksu 1 X-ray off runway 25, runway 25 only, straight ahead to Papa Oscar 241, which is coded. Uh, there's no speed or height restrictions. Papa Oscar 246, Papa Oscar 270, uh, and then it's a left turn Papa Oscar 303. Uh, now, flight of 100 or less, or by ATC, so we'll imagine there's uh, no cleared. Uh, we'll be cleared to climb higher, but we'll just stop at 80. Edoxa, and that's the uh, and then Eriksu. That's the end of the arrival. So it's our nav, no nav aids to tune. I have got the ILS tuned anyway if I have to do an immediate return. Perfect. So that's all done. Sid briefing complete, taxi routing complete. Uh, it's an R nav departure, NADP 1, someone pointed out, so we'll bug up at 3,300 feet. Uh, Excellent. Uh, I think we've got everything there. LGS fix the NDP one point. Uh, Domino, I wonder if your flight to an undisclosed airport in Poland went over undisclosed location of Domino Mosi uh, there. Domino, you have to remind me in uh, DM me where, whereabouts your home airport was. I can't remember. I think you did tell me once, but I can't remember now. What on earth is that doing over there blocking the taxiway? Right, let's prepare for pushback. What's all this clicking I can hear? Is that GSX? moving stuff around. Where's our Parisian pushback leader? Ah, here he is. Two times, uh, I've seen your message in Discord. I've got about seven or eight to get back to. But it's been so busy on my uh, block on. Just saw you pop up in chat. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Yeah, sounds a bit French, doesn't he? Alright, AP bleed on. Master Caution Jewel Bleed. Uh, no, it didn't go there. <laughs> Don't know see that. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Uh, life begins at 40. Fly Day Sim, I've watched some of your other YouTube videos. I've liked them and I thought I'd join a stream. Oh, thank you very much for watching some of the older content. Uh, glad you enjoy them and thanks for liking them as well. And I see you here. Craig Maddox, on takeoff, could you discuss how to trim correctly? I tend to struggle. Of course I can. The main thing to remember with trim is that the only purpose of trim is to relieve control column forces. Don't fly on the trimmer. Look at this for timing for the stream. Due out in two minutes at 3-0. Oh, perfect on time Alpaca Airways flight. Oh, it's very dark, isn't it, in Paris? Live time, so it will be a nice sunset approach into Barcelona. Oh, I see an Alpaca Airways MD-11 over there. Is it Monsieur Le Pushback? Brilliant. 
Thanks, two tons. Uh, we want uh, nose to the right, tail left. Packs off, anti collision light on. Parking brake set for now, transponder out off. Has he said releasing park brake? It usually says release brake quite quickly, don't, doesn't it? Um, JP Devlin, trim can be tricky. Yes and no. I mean, remember. The purpose of trim is to trim out control column forces. So if you're on your joystick, or your control column, or your Boeing yoke, which I have here, if I'm if I'm doing this, uh, to having to maintain my desired attitude, I'm not in trim. So I, if I was to trim nose down, and when the aircraft's perfectly in trim, you can do that, and the aircraft holds its its target attitude. Oh, flipping PMDG chocks! Thank you very much. Uh, where is it again? They do need to get rid of this fiddling down here in the FMC for settings. Oh, FS actions, isn't it? Uh, uh, many people speaking to me. Uh, parking brakes released. Run away, perfect. Thanks for reminding me that uh, bomb tech. James, thank you very much for the 20 months. Uh, back to slumming it uh, without the tray table. <laughs> Yes, uh, back into the uh, the workhorse, uh, back to the gym. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thanks, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for your continued support. It's really cool how the tug moves as well. Don't push me down into that ditch. Whatever you do. Right, starting engine number two. Just a uh, unicom as well, hadn't I? Perfect. End two. Oil pressure and one. Airport selected here. Yeah, I, I was. I did think about flying the Airbus um, again today, but everyone's flying an Airbus now, so I wanted to go into something a little bit more familiar. Mega update by Phoenix, though. That bomb tech happens to you as well, yeah. I think I forget most streams now in the PMDG. So, start a cut out. Monitoring number two. Fix this, though. Look at this. It's nearly at the maximum EGT. Two, <laughs> nearly six. Six three two stable, way too hot. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. Mm. Yes, we'll do. What we'll do in French? Wait patiently. Why don't you, sir? <coughs> Ross, I did think about flying an Airbus. No, the Phoenix add-on is very very cool. I want to fly the MD11 again. I just like it. Some people have been been very critical of my last stream's landing in the in the comment section. <laughs> to end one oil pressure, saying uh, my landing was rubbish. Even one person was as critical to, to not believe what I am. I state I am. Uh, oh, nice base. Ah, uh, do excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I'm drinking. <laughs> Had a little nip in after work. Had very late lunch. Also. Oh, Yes, look whilst we're chatting away here. Completely zonked. Just had a quick walk before we started the stream. Hey, buddy. Jack. Hello. Hello. I've just woken him up. Hi. Come on and lay down. I better, I better do some work. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me just put uh, Yoki Cam in the optimal position. Uh, there we go, back where it should be. Right, uh, sorry, uh, that Frenchman is being very patient. Patient confirmed. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. So you wouldn't do the rest of this before taxi flow. Uh, what's the temperature outside? Nine degrees, yes. We better use when we get an engine anti ice for departure. Which I don't think I took into account in the performance. Uh, that's all set. Flaps. 
Darren Crosby upgraded to Windows 11. Now have to reinstall Microsoft Flight Sim add-ons. Oh, really? I didn't realise you had to do that with Windows update. I'm locking gear. Just rotate that slightly so you get a bit of better view. There we are. And right, uh, rudders full right and full left. Recall, like the lower to you. We'll just wait until we've seen the pin, and then we'll do the before taxi checklist. Tow track disconnected. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. Right is. Clear. Yeah, it's MD11 behind. MD80 behind us. Now that's an issue. <laughs> I don't think that's going to move. And he is understeering. <laughs> Back onto stand. Wow, well, I think that's a bit pinched. What I'll do is just I'll turn off GSX there. Right, uh, yes, before taxi checklist would have been completed now as well. So as soon as he starts walking away, we'll taxi on our way out. They went on strike and left the stairs. No comments. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to be tuning on to Maxim if uh, this is a non political based stream, so yeah, great. <sighs> uh, so yeah, we'll log off that in that case, if there's no ATC. Perfect. Right. That's all seen, and I'm going to taxi now. So, uh, taxiing. Uh, it's going to be first right, then left, whiskey, full leg for runway 25. Perfect. So, that's blanked. Parking brake released, and let's do a config check. So we'll wait to the back, we'll wait to the forwards. And yes, as we all know, spawn up time is uh, terrifically too fast. Yeah, nice scenery this from Jetstream Designs. Used it before. Andrew, you should get the co-pilot mod. You can choose who your co-pilot is, and oh, there's also a dog and cat if you wish. Brilliant. A dog or a cat? I like the inter interactive checklist in the Zebo mod. That's really good. Chumbo lurking back there as well. Hi, Anthony. I see you here, buddy. Uh, morning, Captain. Sorry I'm late. Work got in the way. No problem at all. Have you done a night shift then, Anthony? Because what's the time for you? It must be mid-morning. I hope you're keeping well anyway. Yes, I might take the MD-11 next, then on stream again, because I do love it. Go back to the States. But with the lighting issue at the moment, I don't know if it's worthwhile streaming at daytime. Taxi. Wee! It's, I just taxi. It's like rudder on, rudder off, rudder on, rudder off. <laughs> as soon as you centralise it. Boop. All right, the Vince Hugh just in home, uh, just in time home from work to see the takeoff. Ah, welcome aboard. That's it. Old file like me working nights. I could have had to do that. Our oh, next block, I'm going on to late. I'm not working nights, but I'm finishing sort of one, two o'clock in the morning in the sim. Life begins at 40 truckies. Jim, our co pilot, so he's our co pilot every day. Right, so we're about to cross a, a runway here, 0220. So whenever we cross a, a, a runway, we always make sure that first you've got your clearance. Secondly, we visually confirm left and right that there's no one taking off or landing, and turn on the strobes. So get your clearance, confirm, make sure the stop bars are extinguished if they're there, and then you can cross. Wipers don't work in the PMDG, do they? No. No, it's, no, it's just pointless. Ah, Danny Santos, you came home from Cape Verde. Very nice. Uh, good flight for you. Uh, thank you very much. Hope your flight was uh, enjoyable. Uh, Listerman, so are your sims used more uh, often than your planes? I mean, they're all used. The, the, every airline will utilise their simulators and aircraft as much as possible because an aeroplane or simulator not flying or on the ground doing nothing isn't making much money so from a uh, commercial point of view yes but also a good a thing i'll point out for you aircraft like the 737 they don't like being off for a long time so if you collect an aircraft that's been sort of shut down for a while 
it, especially if it's been cold, it takes a while for the radios to sometimes work, or the PA can be a bit staticky. So, so when you pick up an aircraft that's been sat for a long time, it often picks up a few little gremlins here and there. Not often, like not when I say gremlins, little uh, not operational issues. But uh, yeah, I'd far rather fly an aircraft that's been flying the day before than one that's been sat on the ground. Oh yeah, Vince. Yeah, not many. I mean, as a principle. They try to avoid doing late night sims, but yeah, we do have some sim sessions that start 10.30 at night. And that, that is, yeah, no one likes going to work at that time, but someone has to do it. Um, touch wood, I don't know, I haven't had a huge amount since I've come back. Right, let's do the before takeoff checklist. So, config we checked, flaps we have 5, 5 green lights, stabbed 5.6 units set. Uh, so takeoff briefing, Pax Auto bleeds on wet speed set for departure, 134, 143, 148 set. The departure is the Iriksu 1 X-ray, it's an RNAV SID straight ahead, Papa Oscar 241, climbing flight level 80. It's NADP1, meaning we'll accelerate when we're 3,000 feet above aerodrome level. And the uh, MSA off to the west, the direction we're flying, let me just have a little look at an approach chart off in the west. Uh, it's 3,200 feet all the way round, so we'll climb to 4,000 feet runway heading if we have any problems after departure. So that's reviewed. There we are, cabin secure, chance complete. Welcome aboard, Paul Mason, thanks for subscribing. Oh, you've got a lake on the taxiway. It's wet, but it uh, looks good though. Another oh, queue of aircraft though. Look at the atmospheric lighting on the aircraft. Ollie traffic, I'll pack a 3 2 mic kilos, uh, lining up takeoff from way 25. Keep the uh, aircraft rolling then, so 24 knots. Perfect, I need to update Nightbot by the way, there's two copies, check out the pinned comment, there's now two copies of the Barcelona scenery to give Excellent, so there's no hot spot. I should have turned the strobes off, but we'll leave them on now. So MCP set transponder T A R A strobe lights are on and landing lights are on. Check this complete. Didn't hear me on that sim. Uh, I know why, because I flew with the Airbus side stick last time. Let me just do that again. If you'd hear me now. Uh, and all the traffic out back at 32 mic kilo taking off runway 25. Excellent. Oh, come on, PMDG. <laughs> Force it onto the line. Right, uh, let's go to Barcelona. Uh, so, timing. 100%. Those are incredibly bright. That is actually, leading lights are very bright in real life. So. There we are, stabilised, set takeoff thrust. There we are, 90.8, takeoff thrust Probably sets indication. Check, to respawn pressure. I do like how the rain has almost disappeared on the windscreen now, we're going faster. Oh, someone's just taken off on the rear runway, whoops. <laughs> Hands off fresh lever. Delay for rotation because okay. it's wet. Come on, aircraft, there we are. Yeah, no dead band in the PMBG uh, now. It used climb. to be. Uh, there we are, gears up. Yeah, there's no dead band now. I didn't have to make a secondary pushback. So that was 20 degrees. And again, the flight director should. Well, it can command about 20, but we're quite. Lights down, haven't got a huge thrust setting. So there's only traffic uh, two and a half miles ahead, so they've taken off from runway 24. So hopefully, they're not on the same SID. So, NADP 1, we just maintain this speed until 3,300 feet. Again, we never pitch above 20 degrees, even if the flight director commands it. Seems to have settled down now at a sensible attitude and speed. 
That's the speed trim system trimming automatically. But the aircraft's pretty much, you see it's not quite in trim. I need a little bit of other nose up trim. The flight director's very sensitive in pitch. There we are, that's 3,300 feet, so what we do now is bug up. The flight director will now lower the nose to accelerate to the up speed, or whatever bug up speed we set. Because we're climbing to a flight level, we set standards. Above the white bug on the speed tape, that means we can retract the flaps to one and accelerating. And the aircraft's nicely in trim. There's the left turn after 421, so we can make the turn to 241, sorry, we can turn to 246. There's the one bug and accelerating, we can select flaps up. PLIs that are there, that's realistic, the PLIs will disappear approaching the up speed, there they go. Our flaps up, no lights, so we'll now select VNAV. The aircraft will accelerate to 250 knots at VNAV speed, that's the correct FMA. We'll lower the nose, follow the flight directors. Very nice, engine anti ice is on in icing conditions. Get the aircraft nicely in trim. Not quite there yet. There we go, so that's the aircraft in trim, but no inputs, and that way you can get the autopilot in every time. So, Command A, uh, approaching flight level 8-0, so we'll select vertical speed 2,000 feet per minute, after takeoff checklist. Gears off, water brakes off, 7 degrees in icing conditions, leave engine anti-ice on. Air conditioning and pressurisation, 2.5 set, release the crew. There we are, after takeoff checklist completes. So there's no ATC. And the cleared level is 8-0 on the SID, so we'll imagine we've been cleared unrestricted now to our cruise level. Flight level is 3-3-0. Minimums, minimums, minimums. Approaching minimums. So VNAV. There's no restrictions in the FMC. After takeoff, check is complete. Itch and scratch it. Member for 51 months on the flight deck to Tim Channel. 51 months. It's going to be... Over four years. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's that's insane. Four years uh, as a member. And I hope you're doing well on this uh, Tuesday afternoon, morning, evening, wherever it is for you, sir. Right, so just turn down Microsoft Flight Simulator slightly. There we go. On the way out. Uh, Cam MD80, uh, why not climb in VNAV, Captain? Yes, yeah, so some airlines... Oh, look at that, breaking out the cloud. Uh, some airlines use VNAV for departure. My operator, we don't. Bug up manually as per the NADP or acceleration light point. God, this looks so good. There we are. Passing 102 for flight level 330. Pre cruise checks, so fuel four pumps on, none in the center, lights coming off. APU's off, pressurisation 4.0 and set, release passengers, recall, uh, monitoring 1215 and we don't have CPDLC in the sim yet. There we go, that should be on COM1 as well, check's complete and that should be turned on. Cool. Mango says, uh, is the 737 the only Boeing plane that requires you to manually switch water brake to off? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Probably, yes. Should be at 25. This is... looks incredible, this sim. So pretty. Brilliant. Uh, Paul Mason, great question. Um, how do you know how many knots you're doing whilst taxiing? Use the ground speed. So the ground speed, which is here, is incredibly accurate on the ground. So all speeds whilst taxiing are based off ground speed. Great question. Rory Heath, great question, sir. Why is there no engine pitch change when you accelerate? I thought the pitch of the engine lowered at that point. Yes, so on the takeoff, um, the engines reduce from your takeoff thrust setting uh, to your climb thrust setting at 1,500 feet. And that doesn't usually coincide with the point we accelerate. It's just it changes to that point. 
Uh, actually, one thing we do at my operator is when you are cleared above 150, we actually delete any reduced climb thrust. But because we went 26k full, we don't need to do that today. So there isn't any noticeable pitch change from climb th uh, your initial climb thrust to full climb thrust. It's the same. So I hope that answers your, your question, Roy, and I hope you're, you're keeping well, sir. You're welcome, Paul. Glad I answered your question. Stu Yates, not long back from a monster trip to New York. You went on a Lufthansa 340 outbound and uh, 7478 back in the Frankfurt. Oh, all the quad jets, lovely. Uh, awesome machines, but the Airbus is still my favourite. I, I uh, wish for you to depart this live stream. <laughs> Joking. Oh dear. This, you went on a jump. You prefer that over the jumbo? <laughs> no good. No good. For those of you interested, uh, ETA is out 1803. Probably a little bit less because I'll show you how we fly the arrival into Barcelona. Axel, what unit is the fuel flow indicated in? It's in uh, kilos per hour. Uh, some airlines will have this in the US most likely. Uh, configured to pounds per hour. So, you, as we climb, look, the thrust actually increases slowly, but your, flow, your fuel flow will be decreasing continuously as you climb. That's because the uh, air becomes less dense, and then you use less fuel in the combustion. But that also reduces your thrust as well, so your rate of climb will slowly reduce as well as you get higher. A, a jet turbofan engine is most efficient at high M1s at high altitude. That's where it's designed to save the most amount of fuel. Yeah, sorry, tons per hour. Yes, yeah, so sorry, yeah, two thousand six hundred eighty kilos. But yes, yeah, sorry, the actual unit is tons per hour. I should be more specific. FPT, another excellent question. Good question, Steve. Hello, Captain. How do you use track miles to run to manage your descent? Never sure what to do with the info when ATC gives it to me. To be fair, when ATC provide that distance. With experience, you, you tend to not really always use it, especially in the 7.3, because you can update your routing to the expected routing and utilise VNAV. But the best way of using your height information, if if it's provided by ATC, let's say they gave you, uh, you know, Alpaca 3.2 by Kilo, our call sign. Uh, descent to 80, you have 25 miles, track miles. The, the first thing you do is multiply it by 3. So if you multiply 25 by 3, that comes out with 75. So that's 7... You want to be at around 7,500 feet. And now if you're doing 250 knots, and you want to bring the speed back to around 200 knots on base leg, or 180, the recommended IKO speed, uh, for every 10 knots you want to reduce, add one more nautical track mile to your, your track. And that's very conservative, but it takes roughly one mile to reduce 10 knots at the 737. If you've got a tailwind on final, Every 10 knots tailwind, also add another one knot, uh, one uh, nautical mile to your track. And with that information, you can have a rough idea of what height you should be at. Uh, so yeah, I hope that also answers your question, sir. Perfect. Uh, Thomas, what are the graphics like in a real sim compared to flights of 2020? Very, very good. Uh, I think the the PMDG have, have got a really good cockpit modelling uh, here outside the window. Spectacular, really, really good. Uh, I've actually got a a, a comparison short. Uh, if you go to my YouTube homepage, press the shorts, and I did a Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 v Real Life video, like a overhead. I think it was, was it Bill Bow or Santander, and it, it looks identical. Same, I use the same time, same weather. Picture, picture, a picture looked identical to, to real life. Davo, can our never be done in poor weather conditions? Absolutely, yeah. Weather isn't really a precursor over uh, your type of arrival you fly. Uh, our nav arrivals and SIDs and stars are more common than uh, the conventional now. Oh, I think. So, oh, the level D. Oh, are you talking in relation to the level D sim? Oh, a real sim. Sorry, Thomas Capira. Yes. Uh, no, the graphics in a full motion level D sim are nowhere near as good as the graphics in even X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Because, remember, a full motion simulator isn't there to, to provide a pretty picture. Now, don't get me wrong, they look good. They're sort of P3D FSX level 
that's what I'd say they look like. A lot of flat textures. But all the airports, so there's detail. It's like um, the sim. You, you have default airports where the runway is literally a slab of concrete and asphalt and a basic taxiway. But then they have detailed airports, so all our detail airports look really good. So they have all the quick taxi markings, they'll have uh, other airlines there, and Airbus and Boeings, and the uh, terminal looks the same as well. I'll try and get a picture. Uh, I'll try and get a picture for you, so you can sort of see what they look like next, next, uh, next week, if you like. Uh, Jamal Soto says, hey Captain, can I ask what your specs are? Absolutely, I can get them up in chat for you, they'll be here any second. Sim Pilot Joel says, hello, I have a low-end PC, so can't run Microsoft Flight Sim on high graphics. Would you recommend buying a PMDG 73 or X-Plane 12 and the Zebo mod? I think X-Plane is very CPU limited, am I right in saying that? Um, x 12 has its moments where the FPS drops. I did a stream, I think, in the MD. No, it was in the Zebo, and we zoomed in, and the FPS did drop. I think both need a reasonably powerful PC. I don't know what your graphics card is. My previous PC had a, a, a 1080 GPU, and that was okay. You could run Microsoft Flight Sim on sort of medium settings with that. I only had that until two years ago. So, uh, yeah, you just have to lower your performance settings to, to sort of accommodate those those changes. Eros says, um, is it true you get motion sickness with taxi at a level D? Yeah, it doesn't feel very natural. Even a multi-million pound level D, yeah, you can't simulate the sensation of taxiing very well. So a lot of people get quite disorientated whilst taxiing, it's quite common. Uh, I'm used to the motion, but I certainly remember when I was on my tight rating, I was like, oof, this isn't right, this doesn't feel great. But, uh, yeah, some people do, don't feel, uh, feel sometimes a nause nauseous in the sim. We do have sick bags in them. Uh, I've not had anyone being sick in the sim yet. I've had people not feel well, but I, ha I have heard of people being sick. <laughs> but not to put people off, it's, it is an unusual sensation. Game your finger 1650 can handle the medium settings. Uh, well, I had a 1080 and I had it all on medium when I streamed, and it was it was satisfactory. Uh, Michelangelo uh, explained it's very single core bottlenecks. They should improve that on the next update, though. Yes, I remember some saying that in uh, Discord. It might well have been you, sir. <laughs> JP Devon, I noticed your little compass deviation card. Uh, <laughs> yes, I don't. They're always up to date, and it looks exactly like the real thing. Uh, this has no deviation, but um, yes, I have uh, never really noticed. I mean, if you can read to a degree on this, you're a better pilot than I am. <laughs> Very good, that's passing flight level 300. Right, angle to 10 degrees. Approaching top of climb. Fantastic. Uh, Alex says, what's the point in the deviation chart? Yeah, I think it's if you ever find yourself having to fly with uh, the compass, uh, you can fly from there. Uh, I think they're magnetic headings. Yeah, I mean, you have it on your little Cessna, don't you? When they do the compass swing. Sorry, I forgot to mute my mic whilst I was sipping my last bit of Pepsi. Uh, Stu, how easy is it to tell strike on takeoff rotation? Is it more likely in a larger aircraft? Um, not necessarily a larger aircraft, it's the design of the aircraft. Unfortunately, the 737-800-900 uh, is more susceptible to tail strike. Very rare, but a fast rotation and an early rotation and a rotation in a gust or crosswind, and if you start doing things like trimming in a rotation, you increase your risk of tail strike. Uh, so, the minimum tail clearance for flat 5, which is the default flap setting, uh, for takeoff, is around 50 centimetres. 
For flat one, it drops around 30, 33 centimetres. I think it's 33 in the manual, which isn't much. So for that reason alone, flat one take off to Mark Prater, captains only. But we default to flat five, it only changed to flat one for operational reasons. So obstacles on departure, you get improved climb with flat one. It's a little bit more efficient. But flat five's a lot uh, better for tail clearance, so we use flat five. There we go, that's our cruise level, 33,000 feet. Cruise thrust is coming back, so N1 limit. Max continuous thrust, again that's an operator SOP to ensure maximum thrust is available if we get into a low speed situation. And Barcelona Q&H we can preset, which is 1019. Perfect, top descent is in a little over 30 minutes. Uh, flying water, take, taking for granted that you are settled and happy where you are. If you could fly any other commercial aircraft, what would it be? Ooh. Um, <laughs> truthfully, I, I don't want to change type. It's not that I love the 737. Uh, and you sort of pointed it in, the way, in, in your, your question there, flying water. I, my life is fantastic right now. Very stable. Um, changing aircraft would be sitting down and actually having to learn for months a whole new type. Um... But if, let's say, I could stay at my home base, learn a whole new type, and I could just learn it straight away, I would love to, to go on a sort of a wide-body jet, but fly a short haul. <laughs> you know, my life and what I do in my spare time suits sort of being around home. So, so it's yeah, the lifestyle of going long haul doesn't suit what I want to do. Uh, someone said about turbulence. Uh, where was the worst turbulence you've ever encountered? The worst ever turbulence I encountered was actually when I was a first officer still. Uh, just south of the Alps around here. I can't remember. Where were we going? Somewhere in Greece. First officer still. And it was horrific. It was... wasn't severe. Severe is actually defined as yeah, the aircraft's not controllable. Uh, it was very moderate. <laughs> as in, we had to, we had to descend to not to be able to keep our speed under control uh, so yeah it was borderline severe uh, and that was just very unstable air we didn't fly anywhere near a CB but there's a lot of convective activity and everyone was complaining on the radio uh, but was I ever in doubt of the aircraft's ability to, to deal with not at all the aircraft could deal with far worse what you could imagine it could deal with um, not very comfortable for those on board and for us up front and uh, after about 10 minutes it left but that was the worst I'd experienced Sounds like 7.6 cargo ops to me. Oh, no thanks, Javelin. DHL the 777 then. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Love to have a go though, but no thanks. 10 day trips. Yeah, that was the worst turbulence I've ever had. So Sky sky checks in, what is the usual time separation on a backtrack runway for PMDG? Oh, v sky check. I think you might need to rephrase your question there, I'm not sure what you're trying to ask. Uh, the, uh, if you backtrack, you know, there's not a minimum time for ATC to sort of get you off and th they'll allow you to backtrack, time permitting and traffic permitting. But I don't know if that's what you're trying 30, to ask. 40. Ah, good upkeep. Thank you very much. For your two euros forty nine, sir. Very kind. Your boss, uh, your motorbike, crabbed in cargo hold too. <laughs> Have a great flight, sir. Smiley face. Level weather is nice. Level weather is indeed very nice. Yes, the forecast in Barcelona. We left very meek, measly conditions in Paris to Barcelona. Ooh, a bit windy though. Surface wind three zero zero seventeen, gusting twenty seven now. But it is cavalcade. It is eighteen degrees. Just a bit blustery all of a sudden. Yeah, that's a, almost a 23 knot crosswind with the gust. We'll have fun. Uh, thank you very much for your donation, sir. Very, very kind. Tom Hates Cats. Have you ever seen the film Hot Buzz? Yes, I have seen the film Hot Buzz several times. I can't remember the name of the village, though. No spoilers. Uh, JP Devlin, worst traffic I've ever experienced was in a PA28 doing partial panel. Lovely! With <laughs> the IFR hood, the, the leans and motion sickness is an experience. Yes, uh, light aircraft, you do get bumped around quite a bit. There we 
Ja. So behind this. Beautiful. Oh, Tom Hoffman's was filled in well. It's very interesting. Uh, Abby, does the 737 have a ram air turbine? It doesn't. It can fly with no electrical power. Just the, Well, just say no electrical power. Just the battery. Uh, for a period of up to 60 minutes. Uh, you wouldn't want to go much longer than that. Uh, your workload increases significantly if it does so as well. Uh, but, um, yes, it has no other source of uh, AC power. Essential AC power is powered by the battery if you lose if you lose all generators on board. So, so now, can you explain the hydraulic system? Right, how much detail do you want? Uh, a ten second snippet or a, a thirty minute <laughs> in depth in depth briefing? You've got three systems: system A, system B, and a standby system. Both of them power lots of different parts of the aircraft. For example, the flight controls are powered by by system A and system B. Uh, the rudder is controlled by A, B and the standby hydraulic system. If you lose all hydraulics, you revert to something called manual reversion, where you can actually manipulate the flight controls physically using the actual cables and pulleys. Very physical indeed when we explain that too. Uh, but that's it, in a, in a very brief nutshell. Perfect. Anthony, thank you very much for your donation. What have you said? Did you ever sell... Uh, what are you on about? <laughs> God, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even going to give that answer. <laughs> no, is your answer. Brilliant. Yes, sold chickens a long, long time ago. Samanga, have you truly mastered the 737? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one has. <laughs> There's no one on this planet who can say they know every single in and out bit of their aircraft. I've got very... 50, I've got 40, what I need to know. <laughs> 30, 20, <laughs> but there's also a lot more 10. I can learn. Thank you, Anthony. No, I've never sold chickens to the... Did you ever sell chickens to the company which dons the cup in front of you? I have. Full <laughs> face. You? Uh, no, I haven't. Brilliant. Thank you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hope your your young lad's getting on well anyway, Anthony, as well. George says, it's great when the manuals say up to, really reassuring. <laughs> up to a maximum cruising speed level. Uh, can up here, just took off uh, in Barcelona, I had to massively crab into the wind. Yeah, there's a, well, I just had a look, a little look at the Metar there. It does look like a really strong uh, crosswind uh, that's forecast. Well, well, it wasn't forecast, it's the actual Metar there. So uh, I don't know where that's actually come from. Hopefully it's just a temporary gust, but it's well within uh, well within limits there. Uh, Jules Lecoup, Le Le I can't pronounce your name as well. What's the purpose of the landing gear transfer unit? That's an excellent question. So, if you have an engine failure, uh, engine number one that is, um, engine number one powers. Uh, there's an engine-driven pump for the for the system A, and the landing gear uses system A. Uh, pressure to, to raise the landing gear. Now if the engine fails and you're airborne, you move the lever up and the gear is not locked, the landing gear transfer unit will use system B, uh, or the system B pump to provide hydraulic fluid to raise the landing gear and that is to ensure the gear retracts at the normal rates for, for, for performance reasons because you've got to ensure the gear is retracted single engine. So that is the purpose of the, the landing gear transfer unit to, to move the, the gear up when number one, number one engine fails at the takeoff from. Good question. Fantastic news, Anthony. Takes his PPL test 50, next week. Fantastic. 40, Stu 30, Yates, thank you very much. 20, <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm not. 
Are you really an A320 pilot in disguise? Ah, Smile. Have you watched my last stream, Stu Yates? With all my expert Airbus knowledge, where I was teaching everyone how to fly an Airbus. <laughs> Probably I have, I just don't have a clue what I'm doing in this this old tank. <laughs> Brilliant. Look all these comments coming in here in chat. Thank you. Cheers, Stu Yates. Very, very kind of your, you to donate there. Thank you. Uh, this bit says most crosswinds typically come from the side. Brilliant. Hopefully we'll see some hardcore graphic changing. Brilliant. Oh, dear. oh, another donation. Thank you very much, 86 uh, Abdel. Five pounds. Very kind of you to donate as well. Uh, let's hear what you have to say. I had a convo the other day. How do newbies get into flight sims? Huh. Do you know of any content that takes someone from basics to virtual airline pilot? Uh, very good question. Someone in chat may be able to answer that question. Um, so, I mean, my content is very much geared to commercial aviation. So we fly Airbus Boeing uh, based off my experience. So I'd say my content isn't best geared for someone who's just bought Microsoft Flight Simulator x like for people who want to take it up to a notch. Uh, now, regarding who's available online to do that, I don't know. However, there is some great sort of little tutorial flights available, both in X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. They even have like the basics, don't they? Take off and landing crews. I'd recommend anyone do that first. Start with the basics and then build your way up from there. So there's all sorts available. I think there's some third party uh, pay, you can pay for courses. Again, I don't use or recommend or uh, anyone with regards to that, but uh, I think it's a, a ability of just shopping around and having that. But great question. Great question. Uh, George Yorkville says so it's like a PTU. Uh, what's that in relation to you? Is that into the reference to a landing gear transfer unit? PTU's sort of, sort of, yes, it uses fluid from a different system, but it's a completely different reason. Okay. PTU is um, using a pressure to drive the leading edge devices uh, forward. So when the flaps are less than uh, 15, but not up, they'll, they'll drive the leading edge devices to the full extent position uh, in a low speed situation. Tyler Scott, any recommendation for base training tomorrow? Firstly, good luck. Uh, and I have no recommendations apart from A, enjoy it. B, follow the approved guidance from your operator. Uh, that's the best place to look. And look outside. <laughs> Don't keep your head inside, especially on short final. Check your speed. Check your range of descent. Look outside. Check, close, hold. 20 feet check. Smoothly close the thrust loose. Hold the attitude. Enjoy the experience. And 321 now says, what are your thoughts on flying the Max? Um, no issues with the, the Max at all. I know it's very controversial, it's had issues which need to be addressed by Boeing, but I fly the Max frequently and I enjoy flying it. In fact, uh, more so now than I used to, especially on longer sectors, so much quieter. Uh, handling is nicer as well. I'm, I'm beginning to appreciate, I sort of was sat on the fence, but I've flown the, the Max a bit more recently. I'm like, yeah, it, it flies really nicely. That's that is my my thoughts. I'm not. No one's, no one's shoved any money in my back pocket to say that. <laughs> Let's just hope that uh, they rectify the issues down in uh, Renton and Boeing. Do I have no issues operating the aircraft? There we are. Look at the contrail. He's very hot. Well, oh no, actually no. We're at 33,000 feet, aren't we? So he's not. He's probably at a normal cruise level. I don't know why Simbrief stuck us down here. There we are. That looks very. Very familiar. Minso, Degol, Richard here before. Pete, so many good questions in chat. Yeah, I have to say, chat, great questions today. Sometimes the questions can be a bit what? <laughs> These are good questions, getting me to think, which is which is what I like. Proves my knowledge and hopefully yours a little bit. Hope you do well anyway, Pete. James said, would you ever want to do a delivery flight for the Boeing factory to your airline? Uh, yes, I'd like to have a go on one. I wouldn't want to do it every week. Uh, because it's quite a quite a long journey. But I'd certainly want to tick it off in my career. 
Uh, yeah, they have to be qualified at my operator to do the delivery flights. Brilliant. Do you like fish? Do you like fish and chips? Brilliant. Yes, I do like fish and chips. 50, 40, <laughs> 30, 20. Paul Miller, thank you very much for your seven pound eight five donation, sir. Very kind, my stream house. Thank you. I'm enjoying the live stream as I drink coffee from my flight deck to sim cup. Ah. You're an excellent teacher. Oh, thank you. Thanks for all the streams. You're most welcome, Paul Miller. Thank you for also purchasing a flight sim flight deck sim cup unless you want it to the giveaway. But uh, uh, really appreciate that and for that very generous gesture and uh, appreciate your very kind words. I personally don't think I'm the best teacher, but uh, I have a way, let's say, of imparting information uh, which I enjoy both streaming and instructing at, at my job. I'm very fortunate to, to uh, a, have the job I have, but be also to. to be able to stream in my spare time, so appreciate your your very generous uh, gesture there. Brintel Shake's going well off the uh, path here with the questions. So if you're in between alpaca meat, donna kebab, which would you choose? I'd go with the donna. <laughs> Thank you. Two tons is uh, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Yes, Monty Python reference, I believe there. Uh, yes, I'm showing my age. Brilliant. <laughs> Joshua said, for brilliant. Oh dear. Alex says, have you gone through training to fly to a Katzi airport before? No, I haven't. We do have some aerodrome specific training at my operator. Uh, we do Salzburg training, for example, which requires sim training. We do that during the initial type rating. So we demonstrate the uh, also land capabilities. Uh, the V1 cut there is also very challenging due to terrain and also the uh, go around both single and two engines. Edo, I'm overtaking you on the right. Do you want me to slow down? You put your foot down, sir. You do whatever you want. Is that you over there? Where? Ah, is that an MD-80 I see in the distance? I can probably hear it from here. <laughs> Empty Chanel, is that? Uh, how should take going? Very well, thank you. Very well. Yes, we'll start talking about the approach into Barcelona soon. It's approaching top of descent. Michael Andrew said, quick question, does a 7-3 fly without hydraulics thanks to the servo tabs or are they servos other purposes? I mean, the servo tab is designed to assist the movement of the control service. How that works with manual reversion, I don't exactly know. But manual reversion, you're physically moving the primary flight controls with the, the cable. Whether they're actually moving the servo tab with that, I don't know I exactly know. I have to delve deeper. It's certainly not an FCOM 2, but uh, good question. One I would need to review and research. Right, anyway, let's talk about Barcelona, because some of you might be interested in flying into this airport if you get the scenery. So, let's start loading up the FMC. Uh, fetch the winds from Simply. Excuse me, guys, sorry, I was just having a bit of a sniff. Reset the QNH, 1019. Load the winds. Execute. Fix rings in. Runway two five right. Sorry, two. It used to be. It used to be years ago. Two five. Two five. They changed it. Changed it not that long ago. Two four right. Ten mile ring. Four mile ring. Three times height. That's uh, ninety nine. Excellent. So, let's talk about the stars and the transition. So, if you're flying in from the UK, which a lot of my subscribers are from the UK or from the North, um, this routing is quite specific for that. So, here we are, just uh, northeast of Toulouse. The arrival we're flying, and from my base UK, we often come in via Pumol. Sometimes, if we're routing a little bit further east, for whatever reason, we'll route via Alva. So, these are the two routes we always fly. So, if we go to the legs page, plan, zoom in here so you can see it all. There we are. And the legs and the FMC. So, Degol Perpignan, there's the beginning of the arrival. So, Alba, max 280, 
uh, I've had to change the 280 knots all below, which is blocked by blocked by the centre button. Uh, and the, you have to be between 110 and 250. That's fine. We can leave that restriction. If, if if you want to know in the 737 where you are temporarily, delete that, check it. So you'll be at flight level 200. So you'll be in between those two restrictions. We then have cut X. I've never had to hold here, but if there was something seriously going wrong at Barcelona, you might have to hold there. And then we route to Bravo Lima 469, which is a speed restriction and res level restriction, max 250, uh, 100 knots or below, and again, I'll change that to 250 or below. The PMDG never, ever knows to put below, it would be below in the real aircraft, it always puts it as an exact speed. And then we go towards the Calelia VOR, which is the initial approach fix. So this is where it's really important to know what to do next. Now this is also another limitation within Simbrief. Correct me if I'm wrong, Simbrief flight plans do not seem to plan for transitions. So if you have a look at my flight plan, it just says Albert Alba 2 Whiskey. But if you look here in the legs page, it just goes from Calia direct to Barcelona in the flight plan. In reality, if I bring up Navigraph again, uh, this is the routing you are going to fly it's not here straight line you fly this transition okay so so I don't know if that's something that needs to be updated with Navigraph but they never seem to plan or allow for these transitions or, or, or certainly if if you can't apply for it I don't know how to select it in sim brief anyway uh, let's go through here Calia and this is the RNAV transition so this is very common now at larger international airports because holding is is great so traditionally you fly towards an airport London Heathrow is still the same you've got four VORs around the airport they'll stick you in a hold and when you're ready they'll fix you off the approach this is becoming more common these are now transitions so the idea is it takes you from the star and routes you to a position to provide uh, s s adequate spacing by ATC and if it's busy they'll keep you on this transition and then just simply vex you to one of these points onto the ILS now question for anyone in chat Okay, where do you think I could perhaps update the waypoint to find out, or what what, do you, what would you think your expected routing would be? I mean, you can have a look on flight radar tracks for aircraft coming up from the north. We'll definitely be landing on two four right today. Um, have a look at the tracks here. And what would happen? Uh, and tell me. Well, I think I hazard a guess. Yes, yeah, Simbrief is not a dispatcher, it's a route planner. Uh, yes, so I'd like it to plan the transition. Oh, hello, uh, Ian Sloan, hope you're doing well. Empty uh, Church, I hope you're doing well. Yes, uh, Discord, if you... Yeah, you might have to wait until you're a little bit older, and then you'll be able to have Discord. Yes, silence and chat. Yeah, we'll go with that, Space Clash. You can expect shortcuts, so... Good, so, so if it's really, really, really quiet... ATC might, you know, some point after Alba, they might simply go Alpaca 3-2 Mike Kilo, you know, a route now straight away direct to this point here, Bravo Lima 443. They might give you that shortcut. So all the way, if I put this as a as an overlay, instead of flying to Calia, you know, after Alba, you might get a direct all the way, doof, cutting out all of this to Bravo Lima 443. And the good news is the people who design this approach have sort of accommodated that by putting a restriction here maximum flight level 80 and that sort of puts you right there so yeah you got the correct yeah so Steve M uh, thinking was by us are brilliant so yeah exactly Anthony said it as well if it's really 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 quiet they might route you straight away direct to Tebla and that I've had that before I've had sort of prior to Caliat route direct to Tebla cleared ILS 24 right now in the summer rush hour you can expect to fly the majority of this transition I've certainly flown here I've gone all the way to Bravo Lima 427 and maintain heading and I've been down to like 4,000 feet and then vectored onto the localizer at like 25 30 miles that can happen when it's busy um, so the idea is, it, you know, you could be flying downwind here and you see aircraft the, the other side going uh, eastbound and you're going westbound. So so what we're going to do to accommodate any potential potential shortcuts is plan from Bravo Lima 439 direct to Tebla. Okay, and then we'll modify the height of Bravo Lima 439 to allow for that shortcut. So if I go here after 439 direct to Tebla, so it goes to the next page, Tebla. 
after Bravo Lima 4... Oops, wrong point. Tepler, after Bravo Lima 439, which is here. But we're not going to execute this. Have a look at the ND here. So if I step through this, look, we're sort of saying, right, after Bravo Lima 439, route direct to Tepler. What we could do is at Bravo Lima 439, we can insert as a hard altitude here, 3984, that altitude. So if we just press a raise, Bravo Lima 439, instead of 73, we're going to put 4,000 feet. That way, we can plan to fly the entire approach, and when you get a shortcut, or, or if you get a shortcut, which inevitably you do in Barcelona if it's not busy, your VNAP path will show you roughly on profile because it's planned to put us at 4,000 feet here. It's complied with the restrictions. Uh, you know, we're, we're between 80 and 5,000 at the previous waypoint. Bravo Lima 443. If I delete this temporarily, you can see where VNAV now wants to put, put us based off that 4,000 restriction. So you can see here, it does say 4777, but it won't go lower than 5,000 feet, which we need to comply with because that's the minimum height. So you might get some messages in the descent saying, you know, unable next altitude, but it's only by 300 feet. VNAV will jump 300 feet high after pra passing Bravo Lima 443, and that's as true as per the, the real aircraft there. So, so that's what we do every single day. All your aircraft coming in from the north will be flying or planning for this expected routing. So I am unable, and I wish I could, but I can't, share you the, the airfield briefing documentation from my operator. We have really detailed briefings, but it talks about other things to expect from Barcelona. Um, before we do that, though, I will just uh, get the rest set up here for the ILS. So, ILS frequency, you've got the chart up still, so we'll select ILS 24 right. I've only ever landed on 24 right in uh, Barcelona. Oh, well, what, sorry, on the westerly runways. Uh, when it's easterly, you're typically landing on 06 left <coughs> and departing off the other runway. So, oh, I'm trying to scroll here to select the ILS. Oh, no, I've not preset it. ILS two four right. There we are, just pin that. Perfect. So top of briefing strip first, one oh nine point five. Let's get the ILS tuned. One oh nine five box one one oh nine five box two. We'll put Barcelona VOR on standby, sixteen seven. Sixteen seven. So frequencies are set. Course is two four four up here on the MCP 244 and 244 so frequencies courses and minimums uh, for cat 1 235 feet so go here oops minimums 235 feet there we are so frequencies courses minimums RVR required 550 meters so we've already expected the routing I'll, I'll brief the routing. We're going to go in via Tebla. A lot of high terrain to the north, 6,500 feet to be aware of. Once we're on the ILS, it's a 3 degree ILS uh, to the minimums. If I have to go around at any point, the missed approach actions will be to push Toga once. We could go around flat 15, set go around for us, pause radar climb, gear up 400 feet LNAV, tune the radios, and we'll climb straight ahead uh, to 5 miles off the VOR, left turn to on the 241 regular lap, and then as directed. And I've gone around in Barcelona twice. It's very common. <laughs> well, I say it's very common. Uh, minimum spacing, and sometimes, no disrespect to my Spanish friends at air traffic control, but uh, I was once vectored in, and we were told by the approach controller, and I'm not lying here, guys, this is 100% the truth. We were told by the approach controller, keep the speed up, okay? Maintain high speed uh, into Barcelona. So we did, we complied with the restriction, and in front of us was an ATR on final. So we saw the distance go from four miles ahead, three miles ahead, to two miles ahead, and we queried it with ATC. We said, uh, Alpaca, uh, Alpaca 32 my kilo, uh, traffic, uh, just confirm, you know, what speed you want us. Yeah, maintain high speed, maintain 160 till four, uh, traffic behind. And the traffic behind was a whirling, a whirling A320 speaking Spanish. Anyway, we contacted Tower, and Tower said to us straight away, why are you flying so fast? minimum approach speed, minimum separation with the aircraft ahead. So we were just like, look, you know, your colleague less than 20 seconds ago told us to maintain high speed due traffic behind. 
And this ATR, we were at, uh, we started configuring at this point, you know, because we saw it wasn't working, gear down flat 15. And we went around at 800 feet and the ATR still hadn't landed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we executed the missed approach tower, apologised, said, yep, we'll speak to our colleague, that's not good communication. And the Wuling landed behind us. Uh, he was only three miles behind us. So, I, I don't know, I'm not I'm not putting two things here, but uh, we went around, went around, flew, landed off the next approach. The good news is, um, flight planning, no ATC in Barcelona is very busy in the summer. Um, we are given extra fuel flying into Barcelona. An extra 15 minutes is on the flight plan to accommodate for this, uh, let's say, busyness. <laughs> so we use that to go around. Vector around, no issues on the second approach. So, yeah, that's uh, that was last summer. Interesting day. And I checked it on flight radar, and we looked at our speeds. We were told to do 160 till 4. Our ground speed was about 160 with the headwind. The ATR's ground speed was 105 knots. <laughs> we were told to maintain high speed. It was less than 3 miles ahead. Anyway, I digress. Um... We have briefed the approach, our yeah, landing performance then, uh, top of descent, still 20 miles. Sorry, I've not been uh, keeping up with chat here whilst we've got this aircraft set up. Uh, so landing performance, import, uh, weather, that's from the sim, great, 17 degrees. Uh, it'll be runway 2 for right, 10 feet. Uh, landing weight, that's great because it takes the expected landing weight. You can still do the maths, 700 kilos to, to burn. 63.6 which is what we're yeah expecting uh, calculates there we are 1768 meters now I should have saved this for you to see uh, Barcelona if you're landing on 24 right which is the most common landing runway um, minimum runway occupancy here it's a super busy airport um, they want you to vacate by Papa 6 if you can Papa 5 uh, if you're parking to the right, which we do at Montpellier, uh, to the left is the other terminal. So we'll plan to vacate at Papa 6. And if you look through here, you can find them on the gen sections, the distances. So 2 4 right, expect Papa 6. And on another chart, I think it's this one, you can see the distance. So Papa 6, 2 4 right, is 2,112 metres. So you can get all the gen information from the chart. So we know what we need to stop at 2,112 metres. Uh, 1768 with flat 30, order break 3. We might be able to do order break 2. No, that doesn't seem right. No, it's too much. We'll go order break 3, take off the brakes, and just let it roll uh, to the end. Order break 2 is closer, but um, uh, this is unfactored. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's quite quick. We'll go with that. Flat 30, order break 3, because that's what I usually use. And secondly, 10 first. Cool. Uh, Let's have a look here then at some of the comments here. Uh, Michelangelo, was that in 2022? Because I was, went to Barcelona with Wurling at summer. No, it was last year, 2023. Um, why are you coming in fast? That's what 80... Yes, yes, that's what I was saying. It was very interesting uh, conversation. Um, yes, it was interesting, Steve. Uh, Spanish ATs, they're really, really good or terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve says, when you can see if the other aircraft's male passengers shake that morning, you're too close. Brilliant. Uh, Leon says, well, swear one of these days you'll make the mistake of saying you're carrier, not alpaca. Oh, Ian Sloan. No, that's that's not an inevitability. It happens frequently. I mean, who here, hands up in chat, has heard me call my operator? Everyone knows who I work for. It's no, it's no real secret. But it is. <laughs> I did one not that long ago. I'm not saying which street... I'm very fortunate there, I'm well aware that I, I stream, and I'm uh, very grateful. They have no objection to me saying who I work for either. I just choose wish to... Uh, I just choose not to disclose. Thanks for respecting my privacy. Uh, reset MCP altitude. Look at that time effect timing. So we'll, we'll set 110. That's the next lowest level restriction. Remember, it's not an Airbus. It's actually more automated in the sense it'll automatically descend. So we'll just leave it VDAV. Jow? No, Jamlin, shush. Dan Air? No, not that either. <laughs> Lynn, I've not heard yet. Yet I watch most back. Never seen it yet. No, uh, it's... Yeah, I'm quite good. I'm quite good. It's when the heart, it's when the workload's increasing, for example, hand flying, and I get my landing clearance. No, D Tarango, don't say that. Stop it, Brandon. Yeah, you've heard Jow, yeah. Good one. 
Daffy, great question. How about sim training? How is it organised? Are there other employees present for sim sessions, even at night sessions? So during the sim sessions, no, it's... Oh, look at that, going through the contrail. Very cool. Um, it's organised by an admin team. Um, and it's a huge admin team. They're really nice guys as well. So, um, you know, in the, in the sim, if you, if you need a bit of times changed or things like that yourself which I generally don't do because I know they're very busy but for example if I need a, a swap a, a, a sim they can sometimes accommodate that but I'll only do that if I absolutely have to uh, they have to work very hard um, deal with changes and you think about airlines some airlines have thousands of pilots they've got to make sure the pilots are there at the right time just just the same as a rostering team for an airline and any large corporation uh, but yeah they're, they're uh, they're based uh, all over uh, my operator. They have several training centres, um, but we have a large one at our training centre. Uh, I know a lot of them well. A lot of them, are, a lot. I know a lot of them personally, and they're really good guys. You need a production team to hit the beep-like curse word. Yes, they should. Uh, Passenger Espar be able to hear when I potentially say my operator's name, so they can uh, <laughs> they can fill it. I mean, I could do it myself. Yeah, I work for. <laughs> I love flying for <laughs> and I think the Airbus is a piece of junk <laughs> joking joking oh dear forever the comedian right 30,000 feet 25 degrees approaching Perpignan See what I mean about PMDG? This ain't right. Idle thrust. And it's holding the speed, doing 1500 feet per minute. That is completely incorrect. To hold the speed at 270 knots, you'd be doing 2500 feet per minute. I think PMDG do something in the background to ensure this works and the speed's all good. But this is too shallow a profile for, two, for two, two, um, 270 knots. I mean, the speed is, is to be fair, slowly dropping, but let's keep an eye on it. Good news is that PMDG do have common VNAV, so if I open the speed window, you get FMC speed and it stays in VNAV path. So the thrust will now come up to get back to your target speed, and then you can close the window again. Driver close, but not yet. Matthew says, I'm going to go eat my uh, crew meal on my tray table with my legs crossed. Yes, I can't do that. There's a, something between my legs that's a bit too big. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many? Yeah, not 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 nearly jamming. I've nearly stopped myself. I've nearly stopped myself. Look at this! I'm glad we flew li flew live time. Fantastic! Just approaching Perpignan here. There's the better train off to the left. Uh, any ATC? No, we've got we've got centre on Marseille. Oh, they won't deal with us. And we've got Palmer online, but no Barcelona. Right now we're back on profile. You can actually close the speed window, retard arm. That's good. Uh, Rick goes flying. How long till captain? Well, we are going to take the shortened approach here, so probably well not four minutes off that. So probably about yeah, around six o'clock. Just after. It's too late. It's only 372 people watching. If Noel Phillips can get thousands, surely you can. <laughs> Brilliant. Is he still doing deal or no deal? That is Noel Phillips, isn't it? Martin, what's it like flying the Max? Yeah, I enjoy flying the plane. Really quiet. Uh, burns a significant... Do you know what I really like about the, the Max? Taxiing. So the NG... Um, you know, it's, it's obviously easy to taxi, but with the the max, so much thrust available at idle, you just release the parking brake, oof, off it goes, but it means when you're taxiing single engine, it's a lot easier to to keep the momentum up. The, the NG single engine taxi, you've got to be really careful of, because if you stop single engine, you often can't get moving again, especially when you're above 60 tonnes. So, so the max has so much more residual thrust. Yeah, Noel, Noel Phillips, yeah, Noel Edmonds, oh, I'm getting my Noel's, who's Noel Phillips again? I can't remember who people are. <laughs> Wrong Noel. 
Uh, Josh, have you ever done an actual RTA? So windshield yeah, work the other day. No, I've done a low speed, but very low speed, as in we can just carry on from where we stopped. Uh, but no high speed. Uh, winds dropped down a little bit in uh, level. Um, 310 at 16, 10k. Few at 4,017 degrees. Very nice. So, what we'll do for convenience, we'll bring up the Navigraph charts here, which I think I pinned. Oops. Ah. Arrival bar. I thought I pinned it. No, I hadn't. So it's the Arbor Two whiskey. Two echo. I don't like the order that they, they present the charts. It just doesn't make any sense. And you can't search them, can you? Alba 2 Echo. There we are, Alba 2 Whiskey. There we are, so approaching Alba now. We'll be there in about uh, a minute. Moody says, in fact, on the NG, single engine tax is allowed when landing weight is less than 63 and on the max when landing weight is 65. Yes, when you're above 60, though, which was what I was saying, Moody, it isn't easy to taxi single engine on the NG. The restriction is 63, but above 60, I'm very... It, it really depends on the airport. Certain airports, okay, if it's flat, but if you've got any sort of upslope onto the stand, single engine, 60 tonnes, forget it. You know, it's really... If you stop, game over, you've got to restart that engine. It's not enough inertia to get it going single engine. You need well above forty percent M1. I've had I hands up. I've had to restart an engine. I've shut it down a bit. Uh, well, no, I've shut it down as per SOP. Um, we were taxi on to stand that the gate guidance failed uh, because uh, someone walked in front of it with a cone. So we had to stop because it said stop. And then I added thrust. I could, I could not get the aircraft moving. It went to forty percent, forty a little bit over, and it just did not move. So I had to just so. You know, Alpaca 3 2 Mike, you know, really sorry, needs to restart an engine to taxi on stands. And, uh, yeah, it only took a couple of minutes, restarted two engine on stands. Happens. Noel Phillips is a bad, bold YouTuber that reviews various airlines across the world. He has over a million. I have heard of this guy, yes. Yes, I, I think I've seen his video recommended at some point. Yes, he goes on all sub obscure airlines around the world. Yes, Nightbot is wrong. Uh, there'll be two giveaways now. Night well, Nightbot is right. As I said uh, at the start of the stream when I planned it, I envisaged uh, doing a giveaway, which I'm going to still do. I'll purchase a gift voucher. I don't know where from. Sim Marketplace, probably, where they, they have this aircraft. It's available in other stores. Uh, so you can purchase the Barcelona scenery. But MK Studios very kindly also said, look, if your subscribers are watching, uh, we'd like to give you uh, a copy to give away from ourselves. So thank you to MK Studios for providing a copy to give away. Oh, thank you from me. <laughs> a little gesture to, to all my subscribers for watching. So two copies of the scenery available to landing. As I said, it is available now. 20% uh, off for the first week. Look at that. That is fantastic. So yeah, we land, we'll taxi on stand, offload the passengers, and we'll do a uh, scenery review. I'll point out some of the nice features. What I know at Barcelona as well. So I've flown to the aircraft you know, 39, 40 times now. Beautiful sunset. Tamanga, the Max engines already take so long. So yeah, that's uh, Bode rotor motoring. Uh, to straighten out the shaft takes up to, up to well, Max motoring up to three minutes. Never seen it go over two, but yeah, about one and a half, two minutes when the engines are warm. Quite common. Skittish, will you do single engine taxi? Yes, I can do single engine taxi in the PMDG. We'll see how it goes. What is our landing weight? It's quite heavy though. Yeah, it, it, technically SAP wise, can't do it. It's, we're below our max landing weight, 65. 0.4 tons, 65317, but uh, we've got to be below 60 to do single engine taxi. So we, I wouldn't be doing it in real life. My seatbelt's coming on. Lighting in the uh, PMDG is really nice. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Gregor, are we doing the shortcut? Yes, we will do. We'll do the shortcut when we get. So we're obviously flying on the star at the moment. I select Navigraph next to that, so you can see the transition. We'll fly 
most this transition. And when we get to sort of here, 449, we'll give ourselves direct Templar, which is typical clearance in Barcelona. I'll try and keep it as realistic as possible. Well, I'll do it exactly as it happens. Well, that lens flare makes things JJ perhaps work. It's, uh, yes, very nice. Even the reflection on the leading edge. And little scratches on the window, very authentic. Now, the, the sim is, is a masterpiece. Right? The, 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 I fully understand why people love Microsoft Flight Sim, and with Xplain, I love Xplain as well, but the, the, the visuals are, are outstanding in this sim. And that is a big immersion point for a lot of people, uh, me included. Joshua, do you often self park without V D G S or Marshaller? So yeah, most at, so we do require either one or if there's specific guidance from our Ethel brief, we do have some stands which are self manoeuvring, so you stop yourself. And the way they do that is there's a stop line uh, which you put your nose wheel on and if you imagine we're on the ground you put the stop line just before you, just below you because obviously the you're located ahead of the nose wheel. So here we are, look, that's Jim and I and the nose wheel's just behind there, so yeah, it just takes experience. But uh, yeah, we have a few airports that require us to park on self-manoeuvring stands. So VNAV speed, why have we gone to VNAV speed? And why has this put us 2,600 feet high all of a sudden? I missed that. What have we missed from VNAV? This restriction didn't keep us... No, that's... This is, this is PMDG. We had no restriction that left us high. We were bang on profile here, 250 to 110, now all of a sudden it's gone 2,400 feet high. Is that because of the restriction? That shouldn't have happened, we shouldn't have had a jump like that. I don't understand what's happened to VNAV there with... with uh, the profile, but we'll go... yeah, VNAV speed's accurate at least, and it's slowed down to... 250 next, but it's... Holding 257. Why is it holding 257 knots for? It's like weird happened there in the PMDG. No, it was perfectly on profile. Oh, now it's going back in. Whoa, it's going back incredibly quickly. More. Wow, what's it going? It's accelerating. What? What are you doing? It's. What? <laughs> Whoa, what's going on? The profile's come back instantly. What? What's it doing? Wow! <laughs> What's going on? Oh, we've discovered an issue with the PMDG. Oh my days. And, it, and now it's levelled off. Quite a thousand feet per minute. There you go. Wakey wakey PMDG. That was weird. Four degrees, engine anti ice going on. That was a bit of a bug, I think. I've never seen it do that. It's usually quite reliable. That wasn't right. Anyway, we're now back on profile. Next restriction to be at or below flight level 100, which I've set in the FMC. What is it doing now? Okay, the path's coming back. I'm going to set 8-0 now, using reserve... Oh my god. Right, we'll go down to 8-0. Using reserve fuel. We, don't, we didn't do any time of fuel checks, but surely we're not using reserve fuel yet. Reserve fuel's 1.8. 1 1.9, and we're landing with 2.8. Why is it saying using reserve fuel? What's happened? I've, uh, has this been going on with other people in the PMDG? But that's bugged. Using reserve fuel. Right, let's keep an eye on it. Okay, we're back on path. Vena path arm, holding the speed. 100 below, and it should command 250 knots now. So there, there's the green bug for the D-cell. From 273 to 250. Let's see what happens. Michelangelo, no, 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 it's not PMDG, it's your real 737 to be wrong. Yeah, don't dare question them. <laughs> There's aircraft just ahead descending. Keep an eye on him just because I don't know if they're planning the shortcut. Right, that's good. So this is correct behaviour now. That's good. Do the post cruise checks now. Fuel four pumps, lights, pop on the taxi as well. Non standard. Logos on, angular bank, 
25 pressurization. That's good. 3.8 set. Verified seat belts are on. Recall. And uh, log off CPDLC would have already done. Checks complete. Have you got descent winds in forecast? Yeah, it's all pre populated. Perfectly. That would have made that sort of difference. That was really buggy. That sort of massive jump in Venus. Hello. Ah, look at that. This is a sight. Sit uh, familiar to Barcelona. Well aware of. Right, approach. Let's have a look at this transition now. So I'll we'll have transitions to 2 4 right. There we are. So approaching Calia, we're going to stay on the transition initially. This is good. This is better from PMDG. Be it, it is. It's doing a thousand feet. No, this is not good from PMDG. It's showing us on path, but it's doing 750 feet per minute descending at idle thrust. What's it doing now? This should be idle path descent. You know, we had that restriction before. 100 or below, but this should be sort of doing a thousand feet per minute, but and not showing us on profile. Yeah, this is wrong. I've, I've not seen it this broken for a while. Anyway, there's that traffic ahead breaking right, so he is about a minute ahead of us. We've got to keep an eye on this for spacing. That looks fantastic. Barcelona Airport's just here. That is beautiful. Yeah, I've always noticed it with the PMDG. I mean, generally the VNAS is consistent, but when you have restrictions in the PMDG 737, it'll get you there. It then sort of was confused about two minutes ago, and then it just gives you this constant on-profile descent. This is not correct. It should be an idle path descent. There's 80 at Calia. We can now set 5,000 feet the next res restriction. And another thing that's a massive bug... You preset the Q&H, so it should counteract this or, or anticipate the change here. When you set Q&H, that changes. That should not change at all if you've got the correct Q&H preset. Minimums, minimums, minimums. Engine, yeah, minimums. that can come off. There we are, 5,000 feet is set. Sun's just set as well. N2, thanks, buddy. Uh, 39 months as a member. Incredible amount of time. I know it's been a while since I've been able to make a stream, but am I too late to catch an engine startup N2 call? Cool. You are. I <laughs> hope everyone is doing well. Yes, it's been a while, N2, since I've started engine. You got it, though. <laughs> thanks, buddy, for your continued support. Right, let's see what the traffic ahead does, because he is less than 5 miles and at the same height. That's him. Or her. Tobacco across from landing at night. Ah, just another day in the office. Yeah, this is this is completely broken now. This is what I don't understand with PMDG. This is broken here. I'm doing idle path, 700, 800 feet per minute, and holding the speed perfectly. With idle thrust, that is not correct. It should be about 1500 feet per minute idle thrust. Uh, well, to be fair, the thrust is coming... Okay, if the thrust is coming up, fine. But why it's showing perfectly on profile at 7... And a, and a, profile at 700 feet per minute, unless I've got geometric descent on, uh, and my operator we have only on approach, but even so, I don't think that behaviour is right, is it? I don't know. Anyway, it, it could be an option, my operator, that we don't have, but it's not as per, I've seen it, when I've flown about 400 different NGs. Do you have Vena Puff? Yes. Anyway, Bravo Lima 449 is coming up. Looking good for the straight in. I'm, there's no ATC. I might just. I, I want to do the shortcut, but I, obviously I don't want to cut in front of these guys either. What is the light straight ahead? We've got uh, some traffic. Traffic down the left and traffic down there. Sort of turning base. Next is the decel point Max 220 at Bravo Lima 443. It has planned for that. There is a decel point in the FMC. Oh, yeah, Simon, yeah, 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 it's, um, um, all the different airlines are flown for. There's the glide slope, so we've got MPS scales on, so you can actually see the glide slope deviation, and there's the localised deviation, the hollow white diamonds, we picked up DME as well, that's quite accurate. 
So I think the traffic is planning that shortcut. So remember, what we're going to do is after 439, route direct to Tepler. This is a very common clearance in Barcelona, routing direct to Tepler if it's quiet. Just want to see if there's any traffic literally ahead at 700 feet. This is way too tight. Might log off just to keep the arrival accurate. There isn't any ATC. V Sky check, do we need to slow down? It's like you heard me. Look, there's this diesel point at Bravo Lima 443. It's the typical point where you need to slow down for 250 knots as well. Hey, buddy, you okay? He's lying on my foot. I need that for the rudder pedal, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, crikey, we've got aircraft on base. He's really. Oh, he's actually, he's actually going downwind. Okay, let's have a look. Here. But this is looking good. 5,000 feet. We we're going to make next restriction. And imagine ADC's clear us down to 4,000 feet. Right, guys. Do uh, apologise for anyone that's joined me in on the sector. Just to keep it real with Barcelona arrivals, I've just logged off. So ATC typically would go now. Alpaca 32 Mike Kilo after Bravo Lima 443. You can uh, you either get vectors. They usually provide vectors. Uh, sometimes they tell you to just go right direct Tepler clear approach. Usually it's vectors. So what I'm going to do is execute Tepler. Look, it's not that far profile. 300 feet high. I'm just going to open the speed window. It has got VNAV speed. We're going to utilise path, though, to put us on profile. See how it does. Should do a good job. And then, yeah, they go Alpaca, treat your bike car, kilo, set 2,300 feet, QNH 1020 now, and route direct Tepler. After Tepler cleared ILS, Zulu 24 right. Clear approach, perfect. So we can go back to VNAV... Uh, half now. So if I close that window see how VNAV does. Now VNAV is behaving well in the PMDG it's just that intermediate phase is a bit sort of all over. Oh it's not Edo, yeah it's not Edo's fault he joined me but it, without ATC it's quite hard to sequence and, I, and I'd rather today because I'm previewing the scenery show you exactly what happens flying into Barcelona. So I'm going to use a bit of speed brake, so we're a bit fast here. Recommended speed on base legs is actually 180 knots. So I use speed brake. That's quite a... F yeah, the, the effectiveness is quite realistic. It's not very effective. That's good. Open the speed window, bug the up speed and select flap 1. And we'll bug the flap 1 speed. And notice how it's in path still. That's perfect. Looks like it's putting me slightly below the glide. Usually the glide would be slightly below us. It's actually putting us there. Let's see what happens. Replay. Yep, flight recorder. Thanks for reminding me. I'll turn it on now. Flight recorder is... Doo -doo -doo. Just firing up now, guys. It's live. It's recording. Yeah, so this is another bit of a PMDGism. VNAV path in the real aircraft, because I've done this 40 times, puts you perfectly on the glide slope. In the PMDG, it has put me two dots low, which is not correct. So I'm going to go vertical speed, a thousand feet per minute. That path is completely off. Why has that put me two dots low? Very inaccurate. So flap one, we're just going to do 500 feet per minute. That's no, that's not accurate at all. Arm approach, localizer alive, localizer capture. Run, we're heading two four four. Flap five. Yeah, the VNAV's broken now. Uh, something seriously wrong with VNAV in this uh, update. It's showing me low on path, and I'm two dots low. The real plane puts you bang on the glide slope every single time here. We'll just drag it in. Bulk Hogan, turn off the autopilot and hand fly. Yes, sir. You are the boss. Fly director's off. Let's do it raw data. Oh, don't forget to stay the speed brake. So, well, because... PMDG's done a pants job putting me on path. I'm just going to do a very shallow descent to glide slope capture. Yeah, now it's showing me... Look at the PMDG. It's now showing me on path, even though I've levelled off continuously. Like, what path is it planning? Is it the one degree <laughs> path? Whoops, climbing. That's fine. Right, glide slope capture. Oh, I forgot about the crosswind as well. Right, there's glide slope capture. So idle thrust will hold flat five nicely. Get back onto centre like I'm being drifted down here, down wind here by the wind. Right, that's go wings level now. Localizer will come in now. 
thousand feet is too much. Target attitude is a bit high. Oh, yeah, I suppose flat five. Yeah, that's good. I'll wait till five miles to configure. I need to move my heads up here. That, that. Start switches, recall. Speed brake, arm green light, landing gear to come. Right, so that crosswind has died off slightly now. Probably keep that picture with a 12, oh, it's 12 knots now. It's about 20 knots when I last looked. We'll configure at 5 miles today. Right, gear down. Flap 15. Match speed, landing check. So I've done star switch, continuous, recall check, speed brake, arm green lights, landing gear down, 3 green. Order brake is set to 3, holding at flaps. Flaps. Third, just taking a little bit of thrust off there to slow down. So new target altitude 1 degree, about 57% when we get back to our target speed, flap 30. Just keep the thrust where it is to slow down. Trim. So remember trim, whoever was asking at the start of the stream is to relieve control column forces. Right, there's target speed, 57%, 1 degree. A little bit high rate of set, no more than a thousand feet. What's the wind's died down now, so now I'm right of centre line, so let me get back on centre line. So keep the altitude around 1 degree, flap 30. That will hold the rate of descent quite nicely. Speed's good. Flaps fairly green, light, lights are on, checks complete. Flaps a bit gusty, isn't it? It's flying a bit faster today. Oh, Microsoft Flight Sim, winds, what are you doing? They're all up and down all over the place. It goes from 10 to 20, it's quite inconsistent. There we are. Picture looks good now, on glide, slightly left to centre line. Fixing, collecting. I'll keep that picture now all the way till touchdown. Two reds, two whites. Keep the runway in the same point of the windscreen. 500 feet above the ground. Remember, you want to be looking outside more and more the closer you get to the runway. A little bit faster, just reduce a bit of thrust. Yeah, I did it too high in one set there. Oh, a bit of a balloon. Whee! Three whites, so 1,000 feet. Oh, the, that was a tr the winds aren't right. They don't go from 10 to 20 knot crosswinds. Check. Bit low now. The wind's a bit all over it. <laughs> the same. Continue. Glide slip. I'm just following the puppies now. That's what's important. 50, 40, 30, Check. 10, Left rudder, aileron into wind. Oh, it's so unrealistic. Oh! You, uh, you need. Yeah. You need no aileron in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The landing crosswind technique does not work. <laughs> It's just not realistic at all. <laughs> uh, 100 knots. Oh, I think that's Papa 6. 80 knots. Oh, was that Papa 5? Oh, Papa 5. No problem. 60 knots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Barcelona. Yeah, the crosswind landing. I applied aileron into wind and it started rolling right. 20 knot crosswind. You need loads of aileron into wind. Right, we made Papa 5, not even Papa 6, so their performance was actually not bad from PMDG. Right then, let's close... Let's so close, retract the flaps. Excellent. Uh, I've uh, just getting the taxi chart up for myself here as well. Oh, how do I turn that off there? Good, zooming in on the taxiway as well. And... Uh, yeah, we've taken Papa 5, so that's right. That's where 80 would love us to vacate every, every time. Usually it's Papa 6. So, Tango's, if you're t if you're parking on the north, northern side, you usually go, Tango's out uh, this way and Sierra's inbound, but it can vary. But usually we get turn left on Tango and uh, right on Sierra. Uh, sorry, right across Sierra, straight up to Bravo. So we'll take the first left. Oops. Try and keep it realistic. So flaps up, speed brakes up. The fixed landing lights off. Yeah, <laughs> I love this sim. It looks great. So you start sort of hand flight. The pitch and power on final was fine, but coming in there, pff, yeah, the, the way the winds changed wasn't realistic at all. Usually quite consistent. The winds in the sim, uh, in in real life, sorry, they don't sort of change speed and direction hugely in the last sort of 1,500, 2,000 feet. Well, here we had 5 knots up to 20 knots up to 10 and then up to 25. It's all over the place. It, it doesn't sort of behave like that. And then the landing, if I turn on Yoke Cam, 
we had about 15 knot plus crosswind there. So if you really want to know how to land in a crosswind, check out my crosswind landing tutorial, which is in Explaining the Zebo, where the aircraft does handle far more realistically. So yeah, we had a crosswind from the right, so I know you can't see my feet. So the, the, the D crab, which I did, was left rudder and an aileron into wind. But probably that's what you need to do. The idea with the aileron into wind is to keep wings level. So I went left rudder and I the only aileron I needed was that. <laughs> and even that was too much. It was like rolling right. I was like, oh, I won't bother. <laughs> See, in, in this sim, you do not need aileron into wind, which is a strong crosswind takeoff and landing on rotation and touchdown. You need to, a lot of aileron to maintain wings level. Right, we'll take the next right. Uh, we're going to go for stand uh, 1, 2, 5. So let me get GSX up and running. So 10 knots for turns. Uh, let's go with uh, Menzies. Should be just up here on the right. I don't have a GSX profile, but I don't think I need one. There we are. There's stand 125 over here. And this has full VGDS. The, the marking here is Bob, Bob on. 126 to 129. Here's stand 125. <laughs> Remain realistic for Barcelona and wait 40 minutes for turnaround now. No comment. <laughs> ah, APU. I think with this leisurely pace, though, we'll be alright. So we've got the VGDS here. Oh, we've got Marshaller. Even better. Oh, bye bye, G GSX Marshaller. Oh, we've got VG uh, VGDS 737. That's great. Slight problem the 124 stand uh, bridge is right in the way of the gate gardens. <laughs> <laughs> so it says 737, that's correct. Yeah, JP Devlin, no, the, the taxiway for the default settings are not the best in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you if you use the rudder radius, look, it's either on, left, stops, right, stops. Not realistic. Slow down, that is accurate, because I am going way too fast. This is very, this is fantastic, just how it works in the real, real uh, gate guidance. I'm just, which one do I use? I'm going to use that one, stop. Right, there we are, parking brake sets. Uh, three, two, ah, oh, nearly. There we are, APU on the bus. Two blues, one red, engines are dead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Barcelona. Uh, seatbelt sign is off, cabin crew, doors to manual and cross check. Transit flow, make sure the N2 is below 20% before you do that. I just want to get the air bridge across. And request. At the wrong parking position. What do you mean? I've parked on 125. 125 lies. Change facility to 125, thanks. Hey, 125, 125, and it's even got the correct guidance. Don't reposition here. Uh, what was if I press that? Does it actually move that? Oh! Well, that's not 125, that's 124. Look, and he even put the guidance there, GSX. <laughs> Oh, no, it's request boarding. Oh, I've completely broken GSX. Oh, dear. Right, turn off. I don't need you anymore in my life. <laughs> GSX, trip in. And it, look, it's even put the guidance on 125 and it said I'm on the wrong gate. <laughs> uh, 125 and 125. Yeah, list him in. I parked on 125 and not 125. <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, right, should we have a little look around this... Uh, Barcelona scenery from uh, MK Studios. Uh, show you what's available. Remember, we're giving away two copies of this scenery now. On behalf of uh, MK Studios, thank you very much. And also, want to gift my lovely subscribers here in chat. Yes, I'm tired. Oh dear. I know Tobago. I parked on 125 and not 125. <laughs> oh, good boy, Jack. Right, should we have a little look around? Ah, this is. I love flying into this airport. It is busy, but it's a proper. Yeah, who, who loves I love flying into busy airports. It's always fun and exciting. Right, so I parked where I usually park, uh, around this neck of the uh, woods in Barcelona. Um, I'm just going to get my sort of blurb out for Barcelona as well, so I can sort of show you what's around. So, yes, this is MK Studios Barcelona. Here we are on the main... Well, there's two terminals. We'll look at the international terminal over there. and the I think it's Iberia and... Um, 
foiling her over on that terminal. This is for all the other airlines. So we have uh, lifelike recreation of the airport, detailed terminal interiors. I think all the, t the terminals are, are detailed as well. Uh, driver, uh, ever forgot where you parked? Uh, um, cannot say anything. Right, yeah, look at all the guidance here. Well, I've, I've parked on most of these stands here, and they all look exactly correct and accurate. But you also have all the terminals inside with accurate stand number. You've got people standing around. And look at how good the FPS is. Everyone knows my spec. Don't forget, I'm streaming as well, so that's using a lot of PC resources. But this is smooth as butter for me. So you've got detailed interior. You can obviously see where we parked outside. Where, where did I park over there, actually? There you go. So I think you can see the aircraft look. Uh, oh, I can't get my drone cam accurate. But there you go. You can see the aircraft through the through the terminal. And this entire terminal, I think, is modeled as a huge amount of stands available. So outside, you've got the departures area and the car parking. This is all detailed as well. You can see all the terminal areas. Check-in is around here. I don't know if the check-in or these parts of the interior model. Probably not, no. I think it's just the kind of departures area. But it's very smooth. Wish airports were that empty. Yes, that uh, is true. Right, I'm just going to speed up uh, drone cam as we go off in this direction. Um, I don't know if it's a shortcut or command to speed this up. I would love to know it because I always have to do it manually. But there we are. That should be on a rapid drone speed now. There we go. Um, is, this, is this tower still used? I don't know if that's an old tower. But certainly the newer tower's not there. But that's all this side of the airport. Now operationally we've just landed on 24 right so they always land on 24 right. Departures on 24 left in the in the westerly configuration so when you depart westerly make sure you taxi all the way over there and it's the longest taxi in the world in Barcelona we have to taxi from where we parked all they don't let you cross the runway here anymore well I never get it anymore I have to go all the way down there cross over taxi Sierra Mike Mike 10 then right here cross 02 taxi out there it takes about 15 20 minutes to taxi all the way around but here's the second terminal I'm going to have to slow down drone cam. I'll go very smooth with my Xbox controls. But oof, look at that. It's all modelled in here. All the stand numbers as well. That's a huge terminal. I think there's like some extra features as well. I saw like a car you could win. I don't know if it was upstairs, downstairs. You know those cars that you get on the little stands. But there we go. You've got the car park there. Another tower. All the terminal there is modelled. But all the stands are correct. All the stand markings. VGDS on all the all the stands looks very very nice. Uh, it does say in the blurb it includes ACDM as well, so I don't know how exactly that works with departures TSATs. I think they're included on the VGDS system. Uh, but yes, you've got 30 centimeter satellite imagery and elevation data based off accurate airport data as well. Up to date polygons, realistic lighting at night. So I think we pretty much landed at night, but just to crank that back here slightly. There you go. You can see all the. Uh, just minimise that quickly. All the taxi line lighting. So green for centre line taxi lighting, blue for edge lighting, airport lighting as well. All the terminals are lit up beautifully inside and out. There we are. Oh, hello, sir. Sirs. Very, very good. 12 quid on discount for the first week it's released. Shall we do a couple of giveaways then? My senior reviews are brief but detailed. <laughs> There we are, let me just zoom into the alpaca. It's a shame we're not disembarking right now, but GSX, you know, is a bit temperamental, but I understand the devs are very they're not receptible to feedback. <laughs> they say, no, it's all fine. Sounds like another dev. Uh, let's just turn that sim down. We'll make it uh, a little bit brighter as well. So, yeah, we'll run a couple of giveaways. Uh, now, let me just uh, sit... Oh, yes, sorry, let me just close New Sky. Just seeing how I scored on the flight. Probably not very well. Uh, how do I terminate the flight again? Close. Close flights. Flight closed. Yeah, boy! 10 out of 10. Again, another perfect Alpaca Airways flight. <clears throat> oh, no, full load of passengers. $10,000 earned for New Sky. Look at that routine, beautiful. It's just impressed with my real, real world skills. Timings were almost perfect as well. A little bit early and a little bit late. 
happy days. Right. Let's roll a giveaway. So, let me just get this uh, set up at Nightbot. So, if you are the lucky winner, you need to get in contact with me via social media. Facebook. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Instagram and X are the only ways you can DM me via social media or email me, flightdexim at gmail.com. Um, one is on behalf of MK Studios, another one from me. So, let me just get uh, Nightbot set up here. I'll tell you how to enter. You'll need to enter a keyword in chat. Please only enter it once. If you enter it more than once, you will not be eligible for the giveaway. It automatically uh, spits you out. So, uh, there we are. Giveaways, night bots set up. Everyone can enter. Mods. It's all ticked on. Everyone has the same. Eligibility. There we go. Uh, keyword. Yes. Ignore chats, but members, uh, subscribers, behave yourselves. Right, type in the four letter IAKO code, please, for Barcelona. Only do it once, otherwise, <laughs> you will not be able to, to enter. Four letter IAKO code. Yes, Rick goes flying. Thank you. You've got the right idea. Rick goes flying. I'll fly my drone whilst you guys enter. <laughs> There's actually loads of detail here. I mean, I don't even know what this part is. Oh, it's Iberia, some sort of maintenance hangar. Now, even outside, look, the airport, they've modelled the shipping port here, which is huge. You always see it on the approach into Barcelona. So all these buildings, I think, are custom. This is where you depart from zero... Uh, sorry, two, four left. Don't want to mostly to behave. Three hole points here. Let me zoom in. The texture quality is really nice. Look at that wind sock. I mean, that is. Uh, yes, I need a significant amount of aileron incident. Yeah, the PMDG was, let's say, funky today. It got us there from A to B, and the general landing was okay, but the VNAV was not what I was expecting. There we are. Right. Shall we roll the first giveaway? We've got two. If you don't win it first time, you can enter the second one. I'll have to refresh to get a new keyword. Uh, but let's roll the first giveaway here. I need to stop the music so I can do a, a really cool uh, jingle if you are the winner. So uh, the first winner of a copy of the Barcelona scenery is... Uh, Bounce! Oh, a member rigged! Oh, no! <laughs> well done, Bounce! Oh dear, everyone's going to say it's rigged. Well done, yeah, rigged, member won it, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, well done, Bounce, you're in the first copy. Oh dear, right, I'm going to reset Nightbot now. Uh, there we go, so, turning a new keyword, so let's now go here, keyword. Right, we've done, we done IATA code. Uh, sorry, we've done ICAO code, but the IATA code is three letters. One begins with B, the ends in N. <laughs> three letters. IATA code now, please. Enter it in chat. Only once. David, you've got the correct idea. Simon C, Henrik, Joshua. There you go. You've got it. We'll let that roll for a couple minutes or so. I only put it once. If you put it more than once, you will not be eligible to win. Look at these people that don't usually chat in stream. They've all made an appearance. <laughs> Edo, love it. Again, I'll let that run for a short while. A beacon, someone put. Yes, I suppose it's short for beacon. Daniel B, no, not Heathrow. What on earth? Bacon. <laughs> he put bacon emojis in chat. Oh dear, oh dear. Ah, oh, everyone loves bacon. Driver said Spain, brilliant. Perfect. Liam went for Trent. Well done. Seven Aviator said, "This week is the first week I've actually managed to catch stream live in bumps." Ah, oh, awesome! Thanks for popping in, buddy. Captain Shakel's in the bar. Brilliant. 
Oh, st uh, oh my goodness me. I did miss a donation. <gasps> oh my goodness. S. Shakvik. I've just seen it here on the mini feed. I can re, re, can, re can spam it. I should 15, think I was hand flying. 40, where it 30, uh, mutes the donations. 20. Thank you very much, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're still here. Latin VFRBCN or MK Studios? Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, isn't there a lot of Barcelonas available in Microsoft Flight Sim? Uh, I, this is the only one I've seen. Um, and I have purchased MK Studio stuff in the past and, I've, and I have uh, liked them. I've not seen the Latin VFR Barcelona, so I can't tell you. All I can say is, and it's not because they've given me a copy, I've flown into this airport. It looks like the airport. And like with a lot of the people I, I um, uh, or, or scenery I use, uh, third party. I'm always really impressed with how they look uh, and always appreciate the time they make as well. It looks bang on. Uh, so yeah, I, I can recommend MK Studios wholeheartedly. Uh, whether the last of the FR one is good or not, I do not know. I should think it's very nice, but uh, you choose. I'm sure there's some people. Unless there's four Latin VFR MK Studios and... Oh, why's your message gone? I'm sorry about that. Uh, Aero, Aerosoft's done one as well. I'm sure they're all very nice, but uh, I can certainly recommend the MK Studios one. Right then, let's roll the final uh, giveaway then. So the winner of the second copy of the scenery is Ragbus. Rag... Bus, not a member. <laughs> oh, not a member. So rigged. Ah, uh, there we are. Yeah, there we go. Well done, Ragbus. Uh, R A G G E bus. Uh, so you're not a member. So congratulations. Uh, you can get in contact. Um, rigged, yeah, definitely. Uh, you can get in contact with me, Ragbus, via X slash Twitter or Instagram, uh, or email me at flydecksim at gmail .com. The email is in my uh, subscribe uh, on my sorry my uh, YouTube homepage about section. You can see get the link there for the email. So get in contact with me. I will make a note of your little logo as well. I usually ask if you're not a member just to show me your Google logout screen. So it says Ragbus with the logout screen, so I know it's you. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So well done, uh, Ragbus. I hope you and Bounce enjoy flying for Barcelona in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right then, uh, we'll call it a day let me uh just uh, turn this down slightly uh, oh yeah the uh, replay record is still going as well for the entire period of time um i'll jump into the cockpit just to get it reconfigured for the replay so i'll load here uh the um does it take off didn't have a take off one uh I, well maybe approach we'll go for approach which configures the aircraft for the approach phase and I'm just trying to get as many switches in the right position as possible, otherwise you get this annoying clicking sound. Uh, so that would have been on. I think all the switches are configured now as they would be on final. Perfect. Uh, those would have been on as well. And we will now reposition the aircraft for the replay. Uh, there we go. So let's do that now. And cue the funky replay music. Hopefully that will work first time. Ah, yes, it has. Right then. Wish me luck with this. It's always a bit glitchy. Uh, replay. Yes, it's worked well. All right, let's put ourselves on final. Oh, that's a nice fine approach. I'll leave it in day. I know it wasn't in day on the approach. But... So there was quite a crosswind. But it was changing continuously in the simulator like it was constantly moving around so just turn the sim down slightly but yeah the, the, the rudder was good the amount of rudder input i made was, was quite realistic but the aileron in to keep the wings level was not realistic at all so there's the left rudder coming in d crab and then look <laughs> she turned put the aileron into it it started rolling right yeah you need a lot more the rudder was good but this is the the rollout is just <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna try, try the. I'm gonna try the MD11 again, Liam. Oh uh, yeah, I can't pronounce that. Aaron. I can't pronounce in, in, illegible. I've never been able to do that. Pronunciation is poor. Let's have a little look from the. I just want to see from the front here how that landing looked. Yeah, the replay tools improve. I did update that lots of time ago. I mean, oh yeah, the spoilers won't be out. That's just because the replay doesn't recognise it. Driving like an Italian. <laughs> Mamma mia. 
Left rudder. That was good. Yeah, and then I put right aileron. But, which would have been enough to keep the wings level, but it rolled right instead. You can look at the, you would see the wind on them. Crap. Right, that's pretty much all the replay tools I can use. So, uh, <laughs> let me put you here. Gosh, I wish they had uh, the ability to fly. To, uh, fly past in this sim, that would be so cool. Right then, that's it uh, for today then. I uh, hope you enjoyed that flight from Paris Orly to Barcelona. Massive thank thanks to MK Studios for sending out the scenery as well. Well done to Bounce and to Ragbus for winning a copy of the scenery. I'll send that out to you as soon as possible. Um, who else does say thanks? So yeah, thanks for all the generous donations today. Very kind of you. Uh, always appreciate it. And thank you to all the members for your continued support as well. Uh, I'll be around a bit more. My day's off now in Discord. I've been very busy at work this week, so uh, do bear with me if you DM me. I'll get back to you uh, this evening. Uh, oh, I just want to say thank you. Well, thank you all for just watching and uh, interacting with me in chat. Uh, always uh, like and answering as many questions as possible. Uh, helps improve my knowledge, as hopefully I hope it does with yours too, uh, as I do really enjoy the simulators. They're so awesome. I mean, I was in one today. Look at the graphics out here at the window. It's just phenomenal in comparison to what we need to get in the Sims. So, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all again live very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.